Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And today we have a very special show. Very We're technically show. on break, yeah. but we came back for this. <laughs> yeah. um, we are going to be talking with Lawrence Stavely. Mm -hmm. We're doing a developer, developer spotlight mm -hmm. on Cyrano J. Lawrence Stavely from Reboot. I'm very excited Woo! to talk to him. We played so many of his games over the years, mm -hmm. so many world premieres. Um, so it's going to be awesome to uh, finally talk with him at length. Yes. Because we have talked with him. We've yes. given him awards. Yes, he's, he's, there we uh, go. Yeah. yeah. Very celebrated person. We're going to celebrate him some more. Not only that, not only that, <laughs> we are going to be playing the exclusive final version mm -hmm. of Jumping at Shadows. We're going to give you a sneak peek into that game. Yeah, nobody can see that yet. But <laughs> <laughs> he's waiting in the wings. Yeah. He's getting excited. Um, but before we get to that, oh, it's a Jaguar day. It is a Jaguar yep. day. The Jaguar's warmed up. Bring it. Well, it will be. It will be in a second. As soon as I turn it on. There we go. Warm it up now. <laughs> Um, I want to thank the Twitch subscribers who help Woo. support the show. And uh, Tanya is wearing a Gravitic Minds hat, hat to celebrate. We're going to be yes. using that hat a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, Twitch subscribers uh, Alnifer, Andrew Atari, Armscar Coder, Atari Ned 74, Atari HBR, Pocop, Brutus Dex, Captain Class, Charles Donnie Mal, Charles Wynn, Chitlilla, Sierra, Reboot. Who's that? Dianoid, Dan of C, Drexel, Dr. Moo, Kaz, Gamma Dev, Great Defender, Ground Trooper, it's Kev, JG, Johnny W, C, Caputo Coder, Carl G, Karakak, Croco 20, Standard, Kveltifer, Lambda Express, Lord Tun, Mandy Sippy, T Mark, Yannis, Mark Basic, Metal Atari, McMuse, Mike Soul, Mike Thomas, Mr. Lou, Mr. Fix, Neo Meaning, Nostalgic, Patapolis, Pseudographers, Coa, Grantress, Rana, Ghost, Repentless, VG, Robin, Tullius, Mitty B, Spice Wars, Spinley, Esmer, Steve C, Textris, the D Train, Tiki Dan, KT, Foes, Trekham D, Tweeny, Vexor X, VVG, Double Down. And if you want to support the show mm -hmm. and get me to read your name out very quickly so it's almost unhearable, um, <laughs> you can just hit subscribe. It's free with Amazon Prime, or you can pay if you don't have Amazon Prime, or you can just follow us and mm -hmm. you'll know when shows like this are on live. Yes. Or you can just watch later on YouTube and subscribe there. Um, just a quick mention, we will be, and I'll take the hat now. Thank you. Doing a second chance drawing here, a second chance <laughs> drawing <laughs> yeah. for the Biopede Caravan High Score Contest, nice. which <laughs> I won. Somehow I what? won that contest. Yes, here it is. Here's the results. Uh, Machine holds these contests. Uh, we he's been doing uh, contests for a lot of uh, Lawrence Stavely's game reboot games. Uh, this one was for a Biopede Caravan edition. Nice. Look at that zero page, uh, James zero Very page nice. homebrew James with forty five thousand points. But <laughs> I only won because yeah the fix is in <laughs> <laughs> lauren says um no i won it legitimately i played it live no cheating yeah. <laughs> um but i only won because this guy grips zero three for some reason and he shouldn't have didn't want to submit his score didn't right? want to submit his score for official amazing he was absolutely amazing yes uh outstanding scores yeah. i don't know why he should have won yeah uh, but he didn't, and so the next <laughs> second person was me, so I'm very happy to accept the award on Grip's behalf. <laughs> um, so Machine is sending the prize over to uh, to me, and uh, we'll be showing that when it arrives. Mm -hmm. But there's a second chance drawing. Yes. Where we'll be using this hat and uh, these names that are cut out all exactly the same size of all the names you can see on the screen zeptari atari jaguar vcs zero page homebrew tanya of which we will pull out immediately yeah no away. it won't count if it comes but up. we'll see Don't if it does come up and then we'll throw it away <laughs> okay because uh, it did why come would up you even put it there in the first it's place fine. Oh, it's okay. fine because our name came up uh, some other time we threw it away ah. uh mika g uh sauron um and my other two scores which uh, it won't count. It yes. won't count either. I think, yeah, yeah. they won't count. Uh, Cyrano says, Grips has won a few times. He wanted to oh, share the prizes. He's, okay, he's that's that very good. fair. That's that very is fair. fair. He's, he's yeah. that good that he would just sweep them all. Yes. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense now. Um, so we're going to be uh, drawing for that a little bit later when we have Lawrence on. But the next one has already started. And it's La Last Strike DX, which Ooh. we showed la uh, recently. And we played. It was a ton of fun. So we will be 
uh, taking part in that contest as well. Look at that flask. Ooh, I like the Jaguar flask. Jaguar flask, a sticker. <laughs> that's awesome. A bigger sticker. <laughs> a <laughs> magnet, a patch. I think it that's looks a, like patch. a patch. Um, socks? Uh, no, it kind of oh. loops around. It's uh, uh, mm. That looks like socks to me. Uh, Just fold it over. Doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> list what they are. So <laughs> mystery prize and a button, but they nice. all look really, really very, uh, very nice. awesome. Um, so I think... We're just about ready to get into it. So, let's see what this guy's about. Let yeah. me get this ready. Uh, <laughs> I would like to welcome to the show somebody who is known to the entire Jaguar homebrew scene, who has been instrumental in keeping Jaguar alive through his games and development tools, and is extremely prolific. Uh, a game dev who has released incredible titles such as Rebooteroids, Gravitic Minds, Last Strike, and the upcoming Jumping at Shadows, which we'll be playing later on today in the show. Please welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, Lawrence Stavely from Reboot. Hey. Welcome, Lawrence. Hey. How are you doing today? I, I know you have been sick, so you're feeling a little bit better at least to come on the show. Yep, yep probably still hear a bit of a cold in my voice but i'm i'm okay let's let's do this <laughs> <laughs> excellent you're a trooper thank you so much for for coming on and uh powering through it um so we will only be playing a selection of your games today in the background oh, while we do all. a review all. Uh, interview <laughs> all of them okay are you excellent. ready we're going to be doing a 10 hour stream <laughs> Um, so if everyone's pro no, uh, we've 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 settled whittled it down to fifteen games and demos mm -hmm. and ports. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have some interesting stuff going on in the background. We'll talk a little bit about those games, and we'll uh, be interviewing you, asking you a bunch of prodding, poking questions, getting to the deep, trying to make you cry. No, we won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, before we boot up the uh, first game, let's 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 rewind way back, way way back before reboot. Um, what is your history of gaming consoles and computers growing up? What is the lineage? What did you start off with and uh, um, eventually end up? I think it was a Pong console, one of those TV things. That oh, really? Just up and down on a monochrome TV, which was black and white then, because. We didn't know what monochrome was. Wow. <laughs> so way, yeah, way back. First gen. Very nice. Um, and then a 2600 for Christmas. Yeah. And then several yep. Christmases later, an 800, which was lucky because it was almost a Dragon 32. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would have changed your course of history. A little bit, maybe. <laughs> um, and yep. then... Um, couple of 8-bits and an ST and then a yeah. PC and Jaguar pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh with a very link nice. thrown in the middle somewhere. Randomly. Right. As a handheld. Yeah. yeah. And did you have uh, influence from um, the UK in terms of the types of computers? Because I know in North America we saw a very different lineage of computers. I just got my first ZX Spectrum yeah. uh, the other week. Um, so did you have a lot of influence from the UK in terms of computers? Yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot of bedroom coding going on over here at the time. Um, and you just said you just got your first Spectrum, but over here everybody had a Spectrum. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, was, yeah. And but you it, uh, but you didn't have a Spectrum. I did get a Spectrum. Um, yeah. but it was more just to play some games that everybody else was playing rather than like the Atari right. was always the one you can't right. like, yeah, see yeah. Rescue on Fractalus or Ball Blazer or something on the Atari and then you go and look <laughs> at a Spectrum game and you're like eh, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it is quite night and day it, it's a very different look ZX Spectrum has a very very succinct specific look but, to the colors and but, well the colors they have and uh, and the graphics but, the graphics were really great but it's the colors but again like the, the, the lack of games color. the spectrum games nailed the gameplay and it's the gameplay that makes you come back not what's on the screen so yes that's right yeah it's a very it's a very unique yeah. 
style of game that came out of the UK and Europe back then, and it's totally different to what you guys got in the States. It was like anything goes <laughs> in the UK on at that time. But <laughs> oh, you want a game about the spider climbing up a drain pipe? There you go, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly a lot like you said a lot of bedroom coding a lot of um 16 year olds getting massive releases of their games yep. yeah which is really cool it's a really cool thing um so can you uh that's the lineage of your computer systems and and gaming can you tell us a little bit about your programming history and did you take any computer programming or computer science in school did you have any formal schooling in it where's that was it all self-taught? Um, well, when I was at school, my father was a, a draftsman, and I did technical drawing and computing oh. um, at uh, GCSE level, which, uh, and then it went on to the A-level course, and they told me I couldn't do them both, so I had to pick one. So I picked the computing. Oh. So. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, so I, I, did, I did do uh, computing at, at school, where they taught us like the basics of processes and things, and then we had to write programs in basic. And then I went on to uni and yep. did computer science at uni. Um, so yeah, yep. um, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so you got taught formally. It's yeah. just I got to the end oh. of that, and it was like, well, I enjoy programming, but I don't enjoy programming what people tell me to program. I'd rather just <laughs> do what I want to do. So I got into uh, the network and the support side, which is where I've been in my career. So. I qualified as a programmer yeah. and went into support and networking. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very, very similar to what I did. I did go to uh, university for computers. I didn't finish it, but then I went into networking and support pretty much <laughs> on the internet, uh, the ISP side. I was a manager at an ISP. So I got the flack from all the people who, whose internet was out yep. and tried to calm them down. <laughs> Have you tried turning it off and um, on again? <laughs> oh, that, that, even though it is a joke, that does fix so many things. And when they turn if you it off, do your... they hang up. It's great. <laughs> that's exactly right. Oh, you're gone. Oh, that solves that. Um, but you had some fairly early success with uh your games and programming uh because you sent over something to me that you got published a game got published in 1984. oh look at oh that. my god so early <laughs> look at that uh you got a game called rally uh published so tell me a bit about this what what platform was this on this is the a8 and, and... the Atari 8 bit it, it is <laughs> It's bad by any standards. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> and did you know it was bad when you submitted oh, it? I thought and... it was the best thing ever when I submitted it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so did they, and and they published it. That's that's really really awesome to be able to get something published that early. I would be over the moon if I, I don't think I. No, I, n I never reached out to the magazines that I uh, subscribed to. I subscribed to. I had a Commodore. Si we both had Commodore sixty fours growing mm -hmm. up, and I I made simple, basic games very similar to this. You know, I did some dabbling in peeking and poking, but most of it was, it was basic on the Commodore sixty four. Yeah. Um, but I was never brave enough to submit any of my garbage to, <laughs> to their magazine <laughs> and face the rejection. Yeah. Oh yeah, there were a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> always yeah but that's that's amazing congratulations did that spur you on to to keep going to be like oh maybe maybe this is something i can do uh in the future or was it just like just something for fun that was just something for fun it did um encourage me to send a few more in but then i got a load of those rejection letters and i stopped <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> So uh, let's start up the first game, and this is uh, the first-ish reboot game, or the game that kind of prompted reboot to, uh, you'd have to put a name to the game, I guess. Uh, Project One from 2009. Um, so let's get that booted up, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about how uh, early in your Jaguar Oh, actually, before we jump to that, uh, tell me a bit about your professional programming career before Reboot, um, because I know there is a little bit in there that you uh, worked on some Jaguar games before Reboot. So straight out of uni, 
Um, I worked for Sinister Development for about, well, I don't know, must have been about eight or nine months on Slam Racer. Um, then if you ever see the demo of that and wonder why the cars go around in circles, it's because I did never clear how to make cars follow a track at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, and then just as we got to one of the major milestones, Atari went under and Sinister mm -hmm. just pulled it up and that's when I went into support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that makes a lot and of I sense i was so disillusioned with the jaguar i didn't look at another one for about 10 or 15 years <laughs> oh my god okay so there was a, a a very promising thing that got shut down and then it was just like no i'm done with that yeah i i can understand it, it would be very disheartening to to put all, put that effort into it and uh and then just the rug pulled from beneath you it's quite yeah. weird because um the Jaguar box has a load of pictures on it of games that never existed. And some of them were from like a company called Psygnosis. And I actually went yes. for an interview with Psygnosis. Oh, wow. And I took a load of source code and demos and things for the Jaguar, and they didn't even have a dev system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. Like, uh, so, like, uh, pictures uh, on the box. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I read those kind of stories all the time in um, you know computing history. People who are faking it till they make it, yep. and where they're like, oh, we can do all this stuff, and they're like, oh, we got hired. Oh no, now we have to make it. Yep. <laughs> oh, we haven't even started. Now let's uh, get some outside help. And yeah, very very funny. Yep. <laughs> um, so let's get into this. You mm -hmm. can start that. Okay. Um, so. Pro, the Project One, aptly named. Um, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about this and how this came together, how you got back into uh, Jaguar developing. So I was just playing around and I was using Virtual Jaguar at the time and I was hitting some roadblocks and an Atari age user, Remo Williams, sent me his skunk board um, and that yeah. just kick-started things off. I started being able to test things on the actual hardware. Um, and a group of us got together and we were looking around and like there was all very simple Jaguar homebrew at the time. It was like, you know, puzzle games and Tetris and we thought we can do right. we can do a shoot them up, we can do something really good here. <laughs> and we did this really quickly in about three months and what it taught us was exactly how not to make a game. <laughs> <laughs> that's very important. That is that's extremely important in any kind of um any kind of thing that you do any kind of artwork it's like well you do have to learn how not to do things before you learn how to do things you have to fail you only learn by failing this, that's this, another saying people this is what yeah. i call a critical failure success because <laughs> things have got so much better since this one <laughs> Yeah, but it, I mean, it looks gorgeous. It is hard as hell, but it is. it looks really nice. A lot of parallax scrolling. The artwork looks good. Yep. And like you said, at the time, uh, the Jaguar development was in its very infancy with people just kind of taking baby steps. And this must have looked like a revolution in uh, Jaguar homebrew yep. to have a, a shoot 'em up instead of, you know, tile-based games, let's say. Yep, uh, and Tanya's realizing why it's a bit awful, because it's way too <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Hard as hell. Well, she's doing better than the other day. Uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> there is, Made it to the second there part. There's a laser in this game, which Tanya's just picked up, um, and the okay. sound effect for the laser is actually um, our old dog who sadly passed since, but it's it's him sneezing. Oh. oh. <laughs> Hey, you know, whatever works. That's awesome. He's just standing behind <laughs> me one day sneezing, my... and I'm like, that sounds like a laser. Hang on, we record that. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I've done my fair share of manipulating sounds into projects that I've made. It's like, you can change it into by doing the EQing and stretching and shortening and uh, changing the pitch of it into just about anything. <laughs> this game, basically, we thought we could make a good game by throwing everything at the screen, and that is not how you make a good game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is definitely bullet hell. So if people oh, yeah. who like ah! like super super hard games, I think it'd be right up their alley, actually. Um, so can you give us tell us 
who and what Reboot is and a very brief rundown of its history, because we'll be going through the games, but maybe the personnel side or, I mean, it started in 2010, so now it's in its 14th, 15th year now. So we were just a group of people who wanted to make some games. Um, and there was uh, myself, SH3, and George GGN, and a couple of other people. Um, and we just sat out and just made games and had fun. And yeah, that's pretty much all it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, Everybody's pretty much gone their own way now, and I've kept going with it. So now it's just myself. Um, I've got people I regularly work with. I've got like Roald for the music and Ander for graphics and art. And right. just, yeah. It's, so, it's very loose collective. It's a loose then. collective. <laughs> like, yeah, just people who think the same way that we think and just want to have fun. All we wanted to do was show oh, what awesome. the Jaguar was capable of. Like I said, at the time, it was just like, you know, very simple stuff coming out. And no offense to them, because there was no tools. It was used the stuff from Atari from the 90s, and there's no dev kit, and off you go. And yeah, they did a fantastic job. They laid the groundwork. That's, that's, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you have to start somewhere. And if you have no dev kit, yeah. oh my God, you really are starting from scratch, and you have to figure out everything, either from like just documentation that people dumpster dived out of Atari <laughs> and just rifling through things. Yeah, that's, that's difficult. Um, and, and, and this is a little off track, but speaking of the history of things, what is the origin of Cyrano J and how long have you used the nickname for? I've used that for decades and he's from Star Trek and the Tribble Salesman. He's from the classic episode, oh. The Trouble with Tribbles. Oh, and really? he's the guy who sold the triple or gave the triple to Ahura. <laughs> okay, so you're you pedal you pedal trouble I then. I pedal trouble. Is that yeah, that's what it's about? <laughs> <laughs> so very very fitting. <laughs> so what what draws you to the Jaguar platform to develop for? What is what is its allure to you okay. as opposed to the well, infinite other platforms? Well, my main coding when I was growing up was done on an ST and okay. I loved that system it was easy to code for and the Jaguar to me is basically a supersized ST it's got a faster processor than the ST it's got these two co-processors on it that you can utilize to just boost things even further um, it's basically like I said it's basically just a supercharged ST and it can do some great visuals so um, and it's the yeah. underdog, and there wasn't much for it. So, I yeah, thought, and, and I can understand, yeah. you know, programming for the underdog. There's there's programmers out there for the Atari Fifty Two Hundred, and bless their heart, because <laughs> that not many people have a functioning Fifty Two Hundred, and less are even into homebrew. So it's 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 great that you know there's enthusiasts. Yeah for these systems that are well loved but not well loved by many well, I, and I, but they're enthusiastic about it when they get a new game well, right? well i also i was i stumbled around while i was sorting things out when i moved out of my my, my family home and moved out when i got my first job i found all my jaguar technical reference manuals so i was skimming oh, through okay. them and i thought ah well, maybe let's see what this is like and that's when i started messing around and working with virtual jaguar and then got the skunk board so yeah yep mm. Um, you've collaborated with a lot of people over the years uh, making the Jaguar games. Can you talk about your kind of core team now that you, the, the two other people you mentioned and how it how it's like working in a group situation with other developers? What's the dynamic like? How does the coding go back and forth? Do you start with the the idea? Does somebody else start with the idea? How does it how does a game come about it's, with it with your developers? It's been pretty much different for all of them. Um, so for Gravitic Minds, I just wanted to make a thrust clone, and I just made a yeah. very basic thrust clone and and I painted the background. And the idea was let's just do a quick game in a month or two, and then we just started adding things and adding more things <laughs> and he's like i've drawn this can you put it in? and then before we know it it's three years later and you've got like 
the biggest game on the Jaguar to date. So, <laughs> wow. Well, thank goodness you kept going with that. That's a masterpiece. Gravitic Minds is is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Um, so yeah, um, a lot of the work I generally work on the engine. We have uh, Ender and myself just discuss things and see what we want to do, and then see what's feasible, and then we just come up with ideas as we go along and wing it we have a basic idea of what we want and where we want to go but all the extra stuff that's thrown in sort of happens dynamically um right so you have a lot of a uh, lot of uh, creep um <laughs> yeah and and in, ander is a yeah. fantastic artist and he is superb at game oh, design yeah. like i can't design levels i've tried they're just they're not fun <laughs> <laughs> So he implements a lot of the level design or all of the level design. Done, um, and you level design, yeah. And then, then we, we collaborate and work together on what we can do and what new features are needed and see what we can do and, and go from there. But yeah, uh, uh, the, the gameplay and the, the, the actual content, a lot of that is more ender than myself. It's the technical side that I stick to and, and try and get the engine. Right. So the straight up, straight up coding. Yeah um is is pretty much your 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 part yep. and and i guess the production as well you handle the yep. the promotion of it and um distribution working with the distributor etc cetera, etc cetera. Yep. Yep. and then okay. uh roald is a freelance musician he just does tracks but like because i bought so many of them he just sends me previews of them and i'm like yeah don't even put that up to seal i'll just have that one <laughs> <laughs> that's nice get first pick on that uh, let's see. Uh, so, when did you come up with the push the button tagline for reboot? Because it's so appropriate. Because the Jaguar has one button. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or is that not a tagline? I honestly can't remember. It was something to do with Superfly. Because Superfly is a one button game that surprisingly needs like eight buttons to play. <laughs> because someone, uh, there's a one button control of the superfly but it's got like six other buttons on it because you need up down left right and fire for the menus <laughs> oh oh geez yeah 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 it's never just one button, no, it's never <laughs> just one button. um and i think it was around that yeah. time but i honestly i can't remember we're talking like over a right. decade ago <laughs> <laughs> lost to the ether, lost to the yeah. ether yeah. Um, and if anybody has any questions from the chat, just put in all caps question so it gets our attention and then type out your question and either I'll see it or uh, Lawrence will see it. And we'll do our best to uh, answer it. Oh, he will. I can't answer it. <laughs> um, so what do you think the reason behind people posting that Jaguar has some hidden 3D power waiting for someone to unlock it? And why is there such a high expectation of the 3D power coming from the Jaguar? Where did that come from? I, the, the only thing I can think of is the 64 on the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know why people think after 30 years they're suddenly going to see something that looks like an <laughs> NVIDIA 1080 running on a Jaguar. <laughs> Just delusional is the only word I can think. Like, uh, you can do 3D on it, I... you can do good 3D yeah. on it, but, like, it's, there's no untapped power in there. Everybody's... Like, we've got the full technical specs, and <laughs> the net lists are out there. If there was untapped power, you'd see them on the net lists. <laughs> right. And if, like, they would be able to look at the best 3d game on the system and go well this is the best so far there's you're not going to get double the frame rate you're not going to get double the polygons all of a sudden somebody discovering some hidden chip that uh, was under di the dust on the motherboard or something i mean you, it's, you can, it's really really baffling you can never say never because you look at something like quake oh. on the falcon and you right. would think nobody could ever get quick on the falcon but the thing with that is he got it running and it's fantastic but it's in no way is that an easy thing to work with and he would be the only person who could probably do anything with that engine <laughs> so yes he got it running right. and yes it can do it but the extremes that he's had to go to just you know we're not it's not viable for any mainstream thing <laughs> right yeah, yeah. There's, of course, there's always people pushing the limits of a system. Yep. 
and that makes sense. People want to get more and more out of the system, but a, a magical leap all of a sudden is is very, very, very difficult. Yeah. And you don't see it very often on a system. And, and if it happens, I'm um, all for it. It's brilliant. But like the best that we're getting at the moment, um, as far as commercial releases in 3D, I would say 0.5 um, from the original lineup. And then you've got uh, Doc Typo doing 3D. And yeah, his 3D yeah. is really good. It's really fast. It's really smooth. It is. He's probably the the yep. best 3D coder on the Jaguar at the moment, hands down. Nobody's even done anything close to what he's done. And he even even yeah. he has said you can either have really nice looking 3D or a game. You can't have both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Making it look good on the screen and then implementing it into something that moves around with the joystick is a little bit different. Yeah. That's why demos look so gorgeous and do amazing things <laughs> because oh. Because it's going to play the exact same t way every time you pop in that cartridge. Yep. But a game, it has dynamics and things that are unexpected that the, you know, the player is going to do. Yep. And so people see demos and they go, oh my god, that's going to be amazing in a game if somebody could just implement it. And it's like, well, that, that doesn't happen. Yep. <laughs> very, very rarely. Or it's a very limited type of game. Yep. Up, and on that same line of thought, um, a lot of other systems I play in the show, like the Atari 2600 um, or the Atari 7800, people are able to add chips to the cartridges, um, like an ARM chip yep. to assist. Um, is something like that able to be done with the Jaguar or does it have to work with what's internally on the motherboard or can some outside things assist? But you can add outside things um, and you can utilize the chips on the game drive um, and you could add other chips there as well but the main problem with that is they're limited by the 16-bit bus across the cartridge port so right. whatever you put on the cartridge can't really talk fast enough back to the main RAM to do anything so you could set up a frame yeah. buffer and just have the thing rendered to it and just have the Jaguar sit there flipping <laughs> frames and playing the audio but Oh, At that right. point, you're not making a Jaguar game. You're making a game for whatever's <laughs> in the cartridge. That's true. Yeah, and and I mean the Atari 2600 always get already gets accusations of offloading the game to the cartridge, and yep. you would get the same kind of complaints with the Jaguar, and even more so because everything is on the cartridge at that point and is just displaying and playing frames off of the cartridge. So yeah, because you look at the, the speed of the loading of the games off of the Jag GD yep. and you think, okay, well, how big is that? Okay, divided by the speed. So it does take a, take quite a bit to transfer data um, across the cartridge port. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, well, it's half the bus width to the main memory. So there's a significant hit okay. on that. Um, but that's the reason you can put audio on the cartridge because the, DSP uh, chip okay. has half the bandwidth for the main RAM as well, so it matches the cartridge bandwidth. So it's it's okay to put audio in the cartridge. Um, so there's, there is that. But yeah, you can add chips, but again, at that point, you're not okay. making a Jaguar game. Um, and it would be good to see more 3D games from people, but it's not, not something yeah. I'm remotely interested in doing myself. So... <laughs> Yeah, the the trade off is is quite significant. Yeah, um, yeah, and I I, I it, this era of three D games um, are not my favorite because of the massive trade offs you have to have. It's like flat shaded and very low poly count. Um, you can do wonders with it if you do if you work right with it. But um, I love just detailed two D games. Yep. Um, it just beautiful pixel art is way more up my alley than low polygon 3d what, stuff what the, and i think what the jaguar does excel at and what it can do really well at is the 2.5d ray traced games like wolfenstein and doom um ah, you can do okay. really good stuff like that um and it's really good at, at voxel engines as well so you could get like a nice comanche game i would imagine out of the system but it's yeah, the, the three, as soon as you start slinging polygons around, you either end up with a fast frame rate with not much of a game or a 
horrible game with, or a good game with a, a low <laughs> frame rate. So you can't, you can't really win. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, if you look at Iron uh, Soldier 2, it's a great game, but it's it's slow. Like it's fast, it's smooth graphics, but you're not hurtling around at a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. So if if you did it with maybe strategy games, you'd have to think what. You always have to plan the game for the system. Yeah. Or the game for the limitations. So if you can find a game that really works well with either low frame rate or low polygon count, you're golden. And that'll work really, really awesome. Yep. And, you know, Atari 2600 has to deal with that all the time. There's massive limitations to the system, but people have used it to make awesome, fun, really boring looking games. <laughs> <laughs> Like just squares on the screen, but they're the funnest squares yep. that you'll ever play. I know. I do need to use those I'm like, what on earth is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's called imagination. <laughs> you look at the box art and go, oh, that's what that is. <laughs> Why is there a duck chasing a square? <laughs> yep. Boy, that duck is deadly, though. <laughs> so there's uh, a lot of. Um, the voices in some of your games, I noticed that there's this echo to it. Uh, there's female voices. Where does that aesthetic come from? And uh, do you make up these uh, voices or do you get them from a repository? Uh, no, that's actually my wife. And I just add an echo oh. <laughs> chamber effect to it and we're off. <laughs> that's hilarious. I knew there was something to it. That's why I wanted to put this question in. It's like, there's a lot of echoey female voices in the game. There must be something going on there. <laughs> it's always great to involve your family into things, isn't it? It's true. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Look what I've roped my wife into. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so that's that's great to yep. have a little backstory to the echoey voice. Yep. A lot cheaper than hiring a voice actor. Oh, God. <laughs> Come and sit. It's Record this. <laughs> yep. And that's what Tanya does for the award show that's too. Correct. Yeah, she does all the voices. I'm, I'm of, excellent at all these things now. <laughs> yeah, for, for the announcements of the categories, uh, she's an expert at it. Now we're it's, it's, she's it's done it six a... six seasons of I've it. I've started so, a yeah. campaign on Atari say... Age. You're not invited to it, but I'm trying to get everybody to change their name to something in Polish. <laughs> oh, no! Uh, no! No! <laughs> oh, that's bad for both of us. <laughs> well, I hope that campaign fails for us. <laughs> Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get that like um, what do you call it? The uh, online app to learn Polish and, oh, and yes. to pronounce it properly. <laughs> That's right. Just delete well, all the vowels from your gonna... keyboard. You'll be fine. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you're in business there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're we're going to Europe at some point, so it'll be uh, yeah. yeah it'd be cool I'd... to go to Poland, except we'd mess up the names of everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Let's see where. Oh, so with anything creative, and especially when you put yourself into the public eye, there's always a factor of dealing with negativity and criticism. So how do you generally? I know it's it comes with the territory, right? So how do you generally handle it, and what do you think the motivating factors are behind it? Oh, that's a deep one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I used a little to, bit. I, I used, Hard to get into the heads of haters, I right? I used to respond to it in like, but that's not healthy. <laughs> no, um, feeding the trolls is never a good idea because no. they will eat it up. Um, so now I just try to laugh at it and brush it off. It, like, and again, it goes back to what you were saying earlier. A lot of it comes from that delusional not having the power of the system. And yeah. there seems to be like a hardcore group of people that want this awesome game that is never going to appear. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd all like that awesome game. Yeah, but we'd all, you have I to would be realistic, love to see that right? awesome game, but it's not going to appear. It's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, they just, I don't know, the group of people, I, like, to me, I play games to have fun. I don't play games to, like, gawk at the graphics. It's like, yeah. If you can, like, you're playing downfall now, it's like, you're moving Perfect left and example. right falling, it doesn't get any simpler than that. <laughs> and They could be, you could be a square, and those could be just simple lines Ducks. going up the screen, it could be a duck, yeah. <laughs> and, and <laughs> but the game, this is one of the best games ever made, it is so fun. It is super addictive, there's no explaining it to people, they just pick it up and they know instinctively what to do. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And the gameplay's in there, and like this is one of our most popular titles. Everybody asks to play Downfall when we take a jag to a show or something. And um, oh, of course. We'd sit in there like, but we've spent three years making this other game. No, put Downfall on. <laughs> <laughs> but this one has great graphics and, and a, an awesome 60-minute soundtrack. No Downfall, yeah, please. No, we, Pop in Downfall. Downfall. Just put Downfall on, and then they'll sit there and they'll play Downfall. I'm like, you just have to sit there and go, well, they're having fun with our game, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't you can't get better than that. Yeah. So so on the opposite end of the spectrum, if, if you're fun, uh, done addressing the haters, <laughs> which we don't want to address the haters because that's a waste of time. <laughs> it is, and if they put all that energy into being supportive and productive, and, and yes. the thing with 150% of all the haters, maybe even 200% of all the haters, is they have never achieved yeah. or accomplished anything productive to the scene themselves. Not one of them. Right, yeah. Right. Well, I guess we know where they spend their time, and if they concentrated more on productive things, um, or even positive criticism, <laughs> yep. um, a constructive criticism, that would be helpful. Um, and that's what I do with the show, too. I don't eschew, uh, espouse any negativity on the show, because I know that encouragement, even on people starting out, will push them further and further and like oh something they like something about my game I, yep. i'll always find something even if it's a very first simple game there's always some spark of creativity that somebody's put into their game and you can find what they saw in their game and that is much more useful in a community than just saying this game sucks you could have done better yep. whatever 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 and, and yeah. from the receiving and, point of view you can get 200 positive responses and one negative and the negative one yes. will drown out all of those positive ones because oh yeah. yes yeah yeah so I, <laughs> yeah that's it's hard and and i and i think i put it the other day it's about 50 to 1 for me or something to that ratio before i can like recover from a negative thing that just it haunts my mind and and what i do is i just block block the haters they, <laughs> I, I just get rid of them they they add no useful discourse to the conversation and i just without responding without letting them know that they're terrible I, I just block them i don't need them exactly if someone doesn't like a game that's fine not everybody likes yeah everything and you know you can't please everybody all the time but like there's no need to just yeah. go and constantly bash on people like every time i post a youtube video i instantly get one dislike and i'm like you can't have even watched that <laughs> <laughs> that's right somebody's got like a, an alert to to dislike your videos immediately oh oh reboots put a video up i better hit the dislike like that's 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 a lot of time in your life wasted yep. um <laughs> yeah um but on the positive side the opposite end of the spectrum what is it about the Jaguar community that keeps you coming back for more? And what kind of feedback do you get on your original and game ports that keeps you motivated to make more games? Um, the positive feedback completely drones out yeah. the negative in volley. Um, and just seeing people play the games and have fun, that's enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just if people play something that you've made, or you know, if you're an artist and they look at a painting or something or a song that you've written and they enjoy it, you, you feel yeah. that you've done you you feel that you've done something positive. Yeah. Even if they don't say anything and you just see the number of downloads go up, um, that's that's enough. Even if they say fun game, yep, that's positive. It keeps you going a little bit further. Like even thumbs up on a video, even for me, if they don't make any comments on a video and people just showing up, just showing up for the show is enough for me to continue. So I, I completely understand that, the motivation. If somebody um, gets one or two minutes of happiness out of one of these games, then that's job done. Yeah, yeah. And, and really we do these for ourselves primarily. These are games that we want to see. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, and you really have to because this is a hobby. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's just a lot of fun and, and it's great to get positive feedback. Let's switch out the game. No! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I know you're doing super awesome, and she wants to play um, play Downfall for the rest of the show. So you just put I'm Downfall on. We don't want to play anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna get we're gonna get into uh, some ports, which you have done endless numbers of ports, and these are all from uh, the Atari ST, which you've mentioned before that you um, you programmed for, you worked on, you had one. Um, so you've ported a, an extensive number of Atari ST ports. What is your uh, history of the Atari ST line of computers? And you already covered that you owned one back in the day. Did you do? programming for it did you make some games for it no i didn't make games for it i made games available for it <laughs> yeah that's my that's my next question um can you talk a little bit about the atari st cracking scene that. and uh, being a part of it and how you helped bring games from the atari st to the jaguar and how the uls factors into all of this oh. so how does that pipeline work um Okay, well, I got involved with the dodgy underground side of the SD, um, and hooking around in other people's games really helps you learn how to use the system, because you see what they are doing, you see how it interacts with the hardware, um, and you have to work right. out uh, what things are doing without having the source code to make them do things that they weren't intended to do. Dodging around the lines right. here. <laughs> <laughs> Can phrase it any way you want. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was very. I'm sure the statute of limitations is well expired at least by now, but I don't know in Australia. I don't know either. So, yeah, um, it was very prolific in Europe and, and, and in the UK, and there was a lot of competition, but it was all friendly competition. It's like. You'd read the scrollers and it was like these people hate each other but it was just like how nasty can we be and then phone each other up and have a good laugh <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah i mean it's all about who gets it out first and who makes it look the best and who does the best de um yeah. crack throw in the beginning yeah so yeah there was a lot of that um and that helped me learn the system i never made i no i did make some games on it they, they've been released uh bibris was one of them which is why i did bibris on the jaguar um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, there were a couple, but yeah, I learned the ST. That was my main machine from like when I was like 13 or 14, all the way up till I was halfway through uni. So. Right. Um, yeah, I kind of learned that machine inside and out. So that helped with the Jaguar ports, obviously. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. What was the rest of um, the question? Sorry, my cold kicked in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It was it was just about the ULS uh, universal loading system right. and uh, how that helped you learn how the Atari ST works. So the ULS for the ST, I did that round about two thousand four. So it was long after the ST was done and dusted. But um, <laughs> yeah. I started getting back into it again. I can't remember why, but I did. Um, and at the time. I got a hard drive, and there were a lot of conversions of games to install on the hard drive for the Amiga. And there was nothing for the ST. Everybody was still booting games off floppy, and I thought, well, that's, ah. that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So uh, Booting off floppy. You'd have to have a stack of floppy disks, and it's just inconvenient. So right? I, I thought of this, up, this crazy idea for how it might work on the ST, and I talked it through with a couple of people and they went that'll never work so i gave it a go <laughs> and it, there's a challenge and it did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice so we, Very did, we nice. did about five games for it using the original version which was insanely difficult to use because it was just like you shouldn't be doing this sort of stuff really <laughs> and then that could be evolved into like ULS version 3 which I released freely to the public so I was kind of hoping that um, it would pick up like the Amiga WHD load scene did and like a bunch of people would right. start working on doing port but no it was mainly just myself and GGN and uh, Shawadi Wadi from Devo mm. who were doing them so yeah but ULS is out there you can go to the website and download it um, it's a full Right. Full um, system and set of tools for bringing floppy games to to hard drives for the ST. 
cool. So how do people load games nowadays on the Atari ST? I'm sure there's like an SD SD based solution. Do they just emulate floppy disks? You can emulate floppy point? disks. You can emulate hard disks. So if you do the hard disk emulation, right. you can put all those ULS games that we did onto one partition right. and off they run. Yeah, that seems a lot simpler. Um, so both the Jaguar and the Atari ST share a Motorola 68000 processor. Have you done any other game developing for other 68000 systems, such as the Amiga or Mega Drive? Um, I did dabble a bit with the Amiga, um, never actually released anything. Um, Mega yeah. Drive, no. Um, I don't think so, no. I mean, it's possible, mm. but I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because um, you program, well, we'll get into it a little bit later. Um, you would have to, I mean, you would know the chipset, but if you're not programming in machine language, you'd be obfuscated anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it wouldn't really help. No. <laughs> with, with, uh, with machines like this, like 2600, yeah, you can program in machine language, but once you get up to this level, you, it's a little bit more involved to do machine language coding, I'm guessing. Um... It depends. Like, I still, all my games yeah. are still written in Assembler. I don't use C or Basic really? or anything. So, um, oh, I, I'm wow. not knocking okay. the people who do, and you can do great things with it, but, um, Gravitic Mines, Reboot Roids, all of those, everything's written in Assembler. Wow. Okay. I made a huge assumption. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> um, so when porting an existing game, such as this one, Rampage, yep. um, or the next one we're going to play, Golden Axe, um, how does the choice of game happen? Is it through your own nostalgia, or is it by a uh, request from, you know, the community, it's, or both? It's 80% I want to play this, 10% uh, yeah. I remember this being good, oh, it wasn't, oh well, never mind, I've done it anyway, <laughs> and 10% <laughs> request. <laughs> yeah. Because some of these people complain, oh, the low frame rate, blah, 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 this. And it's like, well, this is the Atari ST version. Exactly. Sorry. Like, I get, I get <laughs> messages from people going, why does this game look like the Atari ST version? And I'm like, because it is. <laughs> uh, like, what, what do you what am I gonna do? <laughs> see out of the window of a talky hotel? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um <laughs> So, is there anything you can do, or is that a massive undertaking to, you know, increase the frame rate or something because it does have a faster processor on the Jaguar? It's a lot of work to improve things. Some things just run faster anyway because it's a faster processor, but you've got to take into account that a one-to-one -one port is going to run slower because of all the work the Jaguar has to do to emulate a machine that is over <laughs> half the speed of it. Like, you right, usually need, right. the general rule of thumb for emulation is a 10 to 1 ratio. You need something 10 times more powerful to emulate the system that you're trying to emulate. Oh. And the Jaguar is okay. not 10 times more powerful than the SD, <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, okay. So there, there's emulation happening here then, there's, when you're playing... I would say there's oh, simulation okay. happening more than emulation. Simulation. It's not, I don't load okay. up a disk image and it just... Every single one of these is hand patched. Every single one of them. Yes. So. Okay. And that leads to my next question. Can, can you outline the various programming challenges that need to take place when porting a game from the Atari ST to the Jaguar? Well, I know the Atari ST has like a one button, so that's not a problem. There's more than enough buttons on the Jaguar. You say that, but it's also got a keyboard. <laughs> Ah, uh, true. <laughs> true, true, true. But there's lots of buttons on the Jaguar. There you go. <laughs> but you can't take your Not name enough, in but... from all those lots of buttons on the Jaguar. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you'd have to write your own scrolling letter routine or just forego the game completely. Yep. Um, so, for a start, the screen is the same size, but it's completely different layout. Um, okay. So, the ST uses bit planes, and the Jaguar uses planar graphics. Uh, no, 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 got that wrong. The ST is plain art and the Jaguar is bitmap. Okay. So, um, so that's a quite different. Massive conversion that goes on there. Um, and SCPCD from Jaguar wrote an incredibly fast screen conversion routine, which is used in all of these. So that handles that. Okay. Um, the audio 
I usually try and get the Amiga music running if I can. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I did see a lot of the listings say Amiga music, Amiga music. Yeah, um, basically because you can just take the modules and swap them out for the for the songs, and then it's nice and easy. Um, oh, good. Yeah. yeah there's. Uh, but yeah, other than that, like SD code just won't run it, it just crash the system up. And so there's a lot of work that goes into these. You're looking at like tens of hours for each one. So um, it's not mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. throw them into an emulator and off they go. It's getting easier, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, so besides. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, I was going to say, as for improving them, I do that in games that I think can improve it, like Stunt Car Racer, I took the line drawing routines and I ported them all to the um, GPU Tom chip, so there's a nice speed boost on oh, okay. Stunt Car Racer, and ST3D nice. games tend to work a lot better on the Jaguar because there's more computation than screen drawing, and the Jaguar can get through oh, that okay. quicker. Um, yeah. And then you've got things like Star Wars where I added in all the arcade speech and all the arcade music, so... Ooh. Nice. Yep. So some some of them you can you can vastly improve them um, through you know the three D chip or, or the sound. Yep. Um, but is there is there some ST games beside keyboard reliant games that you just can't port? Like it's just not gonna happen. Um, I wouldn't say it's not gonna happen. It would be very difficult, and the most of those would be the ones that use um, GemDOS and AES. So they've got the drop-down menu interface and the busy D icon and the mouse pointer. Um, okay. All the games that I've done so far use the hardware directly. So, mm, but anything okay. that goes through like the TOS operating system or GEM, that's going to need a whole new yeah. layer of emulation on top of things. Right. Yeah. And probably not not worth it. It's not worth it in my <laughs> opinion just because most of those yeah. games are trash. <laughs> <laughs> Probably solitaire kind of things, things you would see in in like Microsoft Windows early versions of it. Yeah. That would be a, like in a window. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Welsh Warrior in the chat just mentioned Joust, uh, and for that one we got mm. the sound effects from pretty much every console. We got the 28, uh, 2600, oh, 7800, yes. Lynx, Atari 8 bit. I RK. remember playing that one. Yeah. It, it was fun going going through all the different ones and comparing yep. them. Yeah, that's fun. So you can you can add a quite a bit to yep. it. Yeah. Um Okay. And just kicking a little person. Yeah, but it's not an old man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> get get those potions. At least I knew I had to kick him. Because yeah. last time I'm like, am I supposed to kick this old person? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This time you are supposed to kick. You are supposed the to little kick person. the little person, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to go on to Rebooteroids. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the hardware through the years that people used to play games on the Jaguar? I'm guessing originally it was CDs for the Jag CD and then the Skunk Board and then the Jag GD um, originally or some kind was, of mix of that. Um, this is before I got involved. So... Um, I think this is uh, Bastion 42 um, yeah. did the BJL loader um, and that lets you upload code to the Jaguar through the right hand joystick port connected to a oh, serial really? port on a PC how slow is that? that is <laughs> quite slow um, <laughs> I bet Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was the original way to do it BJL, yep Cubanism wow. has got that. That was the very first way to get code into the Jaguar. Um, wow, interesting. And that's where all the early stuff came from. Um, and then following that, I can't remember if we got the skunk board or if we got... No, we got the unencrypted CD boots. So we had, we had to get a special cartridge that would boot unencrypted CDs. Right. Okay. Um, and then the CD keys got leaked and we got bootable CD keys. And then the skunk board, right. and then ULS, so we could make CDs easier, and then game drives. <laughs> yep, game drives very nice. Yep. <laughs> um, so can can you talk a little bit about the progression of the development software for the Jaguar that you developed, 
and how it's evolved, such as Raptor Basic, Raptor API, RB Plus, and Jag Studio. Okay. So that's so, probably a long evolution. So we pretty much started out, we had the original dev kit, which only ran on 16-bit DOS systems. Um, okay. Everything was DOS command line, uh, make files, the whole horrible mess of everything. <laughs> and yeah, people did really well with that. That's where we got all those early Tetris games and things from. Um, and we had a horrible <laughs> assembler called Mac and um, ALN for a linker. Um, and again, they only ran on. I never saw. I never saw that Kubernetes. Also, uh, I can't comment on that. So I don't know what what their system is. It's some weird thing. Drugs. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounds made up, Kubernetes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. Um, what happened then? Someone took those tools and converted them to Windows 32-bit called Smack and SLN. Um, I can't remember the name of whoever did that. I'm sure someone in the chat will say that. Um, the problem with those two um, utilities was they would decide that they could write the code better than you could and would change things around. So oh. you would never know if <laughs> what you did didn't work because you did it wrong or if because the assembler had decided, oh, I oh. can make that better and... <laughs> oh no. Oh no. That's death for troubleshooting. Oh yeah, my god. And, um, and, and at that point, Sheamus, who's uh, uh, an on-again, off-again reboot member, rewrote them all into RLN and RMAC, which now run natively on a lot of things and took out all that auto generation I know better than you stuff so you've got full <laughs> control if it crashes it's now your fault <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good and bad but yeah. good <laughs> uh, but we were still left with assembler and nothing else so uh, I've been working on Raptor now what you're playing now Rebooteroids has got a very early version of Raptor in there, which at the time I didn't even know was Raptor. Raptor grew okay. out of the graphics engine for Rebooteroids. Um, and I started oh, okay. using that to make my games, which like accelerated things quite a lot for myself. And I just one yeah. day I just thought I'll make this public, so I made the Raptor API public, but that still was only people using it with assembler there was no other way to use it it was just a bunch of assembler tools so um okay and then ggn we found a basic compiler so we added some commands to that and we came up with raptor basic which i ported okay. that rally game to that you showed earlier oh and it's the <laughs> nice. only thing as far as i'm aware that was done using raptor basic that it was an interpreted basic it was slow <laughs> <laughs> but as a proof of concept, it Get was ready. great because it proved you could write something in basic, compile it for the Jaguar and, and run it. Um, That's and nice, a yeah. couple of weeks after that, we found a compiled basic called BXC and George ported everything for that and we came up with Raptor Basic, um, which is what was used for the, the, uh, several years after that. And then uh, when George decided he didn't want to support that anymore, um, Sporadic and myself converted it all into Jag Studio, and we added C and a bunch of other things to it. So mm. that's pretty much nice. where we are at the moment. So and, there's a little bit... And you use... Oh, go on. No, nope, go on. And you use these tools yourself uh, uh, to assist in your assembly programming? So Raptor Basic and Raptor are... Um, completely joined. You can't use Raptor Basic without Raptor. Raptor Basic gives you all the basic side and the C and and, okay. and everything else. And then Raptor is the interface to the Jaguar hardware. So I maintain okay. the Raptor library and I use the Raptor library for all my games and I write my games in Assembler and then we interface it into the basic and the C Jaguar Studio side. So every time okay. I improve Raptor for something that I want, 
Jag Studio gets an improvement as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's usually how it goes. Somebody, yeah, with all the other oh, 7800 basic and the Batari basic as well. Yep, it's it's like, oh, we need these new things for this new game that's being made. Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> it's like, well, that is really slow running in basic on the on the Jag Studio side, so I'll write a Raptor function for it to accelerate something uh -huh. that's slow on the basic side. So both feed off each other. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, there's some great stuff written in, in Raptor Basic and, and Jag Studio. Um, some good stuff coming out soon as well, like Crumbs and Nitrous from, from Sporadic. Nice. Uh, OK, let's move on to the next one, which is actually a demo. Yeah. <laughs> So in 2017 and 2019, uh, you created both the Bad Apple and Snowman demo. Um, so what? This this is kind of outside of what you normally do. What what was the motivation behind uh, these two demos? I know Bad Apple was being converted to everything. It had like to be absolutely done. everything. I saw the Genesis yep, version even... of Bad Apple, and I thought we can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah people are trying to one-up each other all the time it's like oh we can make it look better or higher frame rate or better resolution yeah yep or better sound yeah yep and this one's very very good well there's a six meg version which is a little bit lower resolution but the gd 16 meg version is is quite nice i think it's all all nicely done yeah <laughs> quite pleased with that um yeah and the snowman was yeah, basically looks... just where can i find another video roughly the same length as bad apple that's slightly christmasy to do a christmas release <laughs> <laughs> that's all there is for that. that's that's it yeah so have you felt inclined to to make any other non-interactive demos to show off the capabilities of the jag or your programming skills or do you feel like your games suffice for that kind of thing. I have. Like, well, go look at my games. I have, and I've started a few, but they've all turned into games. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's like if I could just move that thing that's on the screen, it'd be much better. Oh, it's a game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if you do this, uh, but what if you had a player up there and said, oh, it's another game. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all better for it. That's for sure. Because demos are fun, but every time I look at a demo, and it's like, oh, that part could be part of a game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that looks great. Those graphics are awesome. What a great idea for the spinning thing or whatever. Yep. Yeah. And this one, this one's fun because it has subtitles that you can turn on and off. I know. And there's English subtitles. Complete the spelling mistakes. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, let's see. So... What software did the developers use for the original run of games, the, you know, the retail run of games? And did you ever use that? And how does it compare to what exists now? So as I said earlier, they used Mac and um, ALN on DOS. Um, and it was all done on um, x86 machines, compiled and sent over to um, an Alpine board. Um, and completely not friendly you couldn't really tell whether what you'd done was crashing because of the hardware or because you'd made a mistake um right and you know a lot of people myself include complain about the quality of some of the original games but when you look at the tools they all turned out spectacularly great <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it, it is really amazing what people were able to make with those really rough tools at every era of gaming yeah it's like and wow you made that I, with that <laughs> i do believe that if they managed to do a second machine and improve the dev tools you would have started seeing the quality improve greatly but what we've got right now compared to what we had back then is night and oh. day there's no oh. comparison it really is. I mean, we did a full run through of every Jaguar game. We weren't familiar with a lot of the no, any of them, yeah. pretty much. The Jaguars, except for like arcade conversions and things like that. And comparing them to Homebrew, like ev every system, almost like 2600, 7800, Homebrew, Jaguar Homebrew just blows the originals out of the water at every level. But there's no commercial pressure, expected? though, is there? It's like you can take as long as <laughs> yeah. you want. That's right. 
<laughs> That's right. You don't have to get it out by Christmas. You don't have to get it under budget because there's no budget. Yeah, <laughs> it's, no, it's it's weekends and evenings. <laughs> and like everybody says, the Jaguar has like some of the worst games ever. But it's actual the ratio of bad to good is it's yes. not as bad as several other consoles. Like I would say, if you took it as a percentage. Yeah you've got a higher percentage of good and fun games on the Jaguar than you do on the Wii. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, the Wii <laughs> was just full of shovelware. Yeah. And, and we were pleasantly surprised when we ran through the Jaguar games. There was a oh, lot yeah, of there really, were a lot of excellent games. really fun games. The thing with the Jaguar yep. the library is the bad ones stick in your mind. They are so bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's and right. You Where did you learn to fly? The, yeah. the good ones are there because the bad ones just stick in your mind so much. <laughs> Oh yeah, and on, and on every system, the bad ones get so much more press than than the good ones. Yep. Um, just because people love making fun of things and uh, <laughs> and pointing them out and making the top ten worst of whatever top ten worst Jaguar games. But there's some solid yeah. games in there. Like nobody lists like Pitfall. Pitfall's a great game. Syndicate's a good game. You never see those games yeah. listed in Jaguar games list. You always see. Yeah. Club Drive at one end and Tempest 2000 and AVP <laughs> at the other. You, like Nobody yes. goes into the middle ground. Mm -hmm. Yep, unless it's like hidden gems on the Jaguar. It's like one, one video one out video. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've developed a lot of different genres of games. Um, are there genres that you gravitate towards when creating an original game? More so, I know you've done platformers and shooters, a lot of those, but uh, are those you focus on because you like those types, or you like lots of different genres? Oh, well, I, that's hard to say. It's just I go for what I feel like doing at the time, and then they grow exponentially <laughs> into things that I wish they had grown into. <laughs> <laughs> they get out of control. Well, literally, yeah. like we talked What's about Gravitic Minds earlier, that was supposed to be like a two to three week simple crust game conversion <laughs> and th wow. three years later yeah. you've got graphic <laughs> mind so um, yeah well it is truly awesome it is a yeah. masterpiece and, yeah and glad things got out of hand and, for and that jumping at shadows <laughs> ando wanted to make a platform game and i was like well i've never written a platform game so this is going to go one of two ways <laughs> <laughs> well it went the right way it went the right way oh it's gorgeous sure. and yeah. beautiful and <laughs> fun to play and challenging in all the right ways, but we will get to that right at the end of the show. Yep. Um, so before we jump into this game, I think we should do the drawing for mm. the ch second chance. Atari's ready what to draw the game? name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Novagen. Okay. Yeah, Novagen. So we'll leave it at this menu here for now. Um, okay. Ow, 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 so, Carl, there is an a bunch of names. In the mix. Uh, it's coming. Oh. from Ooh. another developer. Uh, Wyvern Fields 2 looks great. Yes. Yes, it does look very, very good. Looks huge. Like, RPGs are a whole thing unto themselves. That is dedication. I, I never I never played think... them back in the day. I never got on with them. So, And I, I didn't get into them when I had a PlayStation, and that was the best time to get into them. <laughs> so they're not for me they're a time they're a time sink they're they fun are. and and challenging but that's time your sink. world at yeah. that point yeah yeah <laughs> that's everything yeah yeah so i just don't have time much time anymore once in a while oh baby cat he's, he's asleep in my arms he just jumped into my lap <laughs> okay so uh we're gonna do the drawing now um we'll do it in this small screen so i've okay. got all the names right here Very nice. tanya's going to draw them yes and if it's me or him, it gets thrown out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, kitten, are you ready? Are ready you for ready? the draw? So this is for Biopede Caravan. All right. I don't know what okay. the prize is, but... Uh... Oh, it's Atari Jaguar VCS-1. VCS it's yes, fixed. It <laughs> Con <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, Let's hold congratulations. That up Very the nice. Now. Yes. Congratulations, Atari Jaguar VCS. Woo. Machine will be reaching out to you to give you your prize. What was the prize for that? Was it a tie? Um, I, he, he never specifies. There was a tie in the mix. Yeah. But on the latest one, he said, you're going to get everything but the flask. 
So it might be everything but the top. Uh, okay. But I don't know. Mm. We'll see what machine posts. He wins something. Yep. At least yep. a sticker and a button and a patch. <laughs> or I don't know what. It's all good yep. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all very fun, branded Jaguar stuff. Don't tell Atari. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let's... One second. Get this back up to the games. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions, remember to type all questions in all caps uh, in the chat, and we will get to it. Uh, let's see. So what usually comes first in the development of a game for you? Is it mechanics? Is it graphics? Is it a story idea? What is the initial seed usually? I mean, it's probably different each time, but... Oh, oh, we can't hear you. One second. Okay, start again. Mechanics and gameplay start. straight up. None of the other stuff matters. If you can't, if the game yeah. isn't fun, there's no point making it. Doesn't matter how good it looks or sounds. Yeah, yeah. So game mechanics, that's that's a great answer and it, it's really, really important. But, um, if it's a platformer, do, do the jumps feel I right? Do the landings feel right? Jumping in shadows, for over six weeks, we just had a room with three platforms in it. And it was a square room, <laughs> wow. it didn't even scroll. And we were just playing yeah. with different jumps and how you could fall and how you dash and how you right. move. And we didn't even look at making any other thing for that game until we had the character bounding around the screen how we wanted <laughs> and and after that we made a simple test level but like if we couldn't get the jumping fun there was going to be no yeah. point that makes a lot of sense and i'm sure it's the same for gravitic mines gravitic mines again movement, i it's... built the the landy the, the, there's a thing on there yeah. called article oh, thrusty thing i think it's a demo you can download it's on atari age <laughs> And basically, it's just the ship flying around between three pads. There's no game in there yeah. at all. You, you like, It's just literally, you crash if you hit the wall, you land if you land on the pads. And I must have played that for hours. And it was like, there's a game here. <laughs> there has to be a game in yeah. here. I'm enjoying doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if your demo is fun, expanding it to a bigger game, it, I mean, that's, that's a lot of work to do, but that is going to be at least you've guaranteed the mechanics are fun and that is a lot to a game the the feel of the movement the 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 weight of the person or the ship yep. or even like the movement in this game i mean this isn't originally your game but in any game that that's made if the feel isn't right people are going to go eh something's off or you know the the reaction time of the the person or the ship it just feels sluggish or it's out of control it's too fast yeah if you, control is everything if you try to yeah. force a game out of a graphical effect or um pretty graphics you're going to end up with something that people don't want to play you have to start yeah. with the game start with the game if the game is fun then you work on that um, and the other side to that is if it's not fun you haven't wasted years <laughs> you could just go, well, <laughs> I'm right. going to bin that because that didn't work. Yeah, and you've only wasted, you know, a day, a week, three weeks, whatever, and you're like, oh, oh well, it, it, maybe somebody will like the demo or nobody will ever see and, it. And, and with, nobody even with know Jack about Studio it. and Raptor, you can throw something together really quickly and you'll know straight away whether it's going to be fun or not. Like, even if it's jerking That's around good. the screen yeah. at like three frames a second, you can still <laughs> tell if it's going to be, if, if what you're trying to do works as a mechanic yeah so besides original games you've made um or ported or converted a ton of games this one is is a great example of that so how and a lot of these are official games where you have been in contact with the original developer or studio um how does that happen normally do you reach out to them um well you probably would but at the, how, how does that link up? At the beginning, I reached and... out to them and said, hey, would you like this game to appear on the Jaguar? And like at that point, I've usually done enough of it that I've got something to show them. So they're not right. like, oh, it's just some random wacko on the internet trying <laughs> to get my IP. It's like, look, I've done this. Are you interested? Would you like it to come to a new audience? And right. pretty much most people are very responsive to that and, and, and they're good and want to go ahead. But... 
I have also had people come to me and go, can you port this game to the Jaguar? So that's been good. Nice. But, but yeah, initially it was me going to them. And on the off chance that David Braben is watching, can you please look in your inbox? <laughs> 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 and and on the other side have you um either not reached out to a company of a game that you would want to bring to the jaguar because you just know they will never answer or they're too big or have you had rejections as well where they're like or just don't answer um people don't answer it's like sometimes you just you get the automatic please contact our agents response back from them. <laughs> um, basically, right. the ones that you've got a better chance are the older titles where the programmer still owns the right and they haven't been gobbled up by a mega studio like Activision right. or EA. Once they disappear into yeah. Activision or EA, they're off limits. They've just gone. Even if they will never look at the IP and don't even know that they own it. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they'll probably be like, it costs our lawyers more than we would make on it. That's a net loss for us. Who cares? We're not going to answer yes. this. Um, and have you had any responses where they're like, yes, but it's $50,000 in IP rights. Uh, so, and you go, well, obviously I, know, I can't do I that. I know the Reservoir Gods, when they did um, a Bubble Bobble game on the Falcon, asked for right. the rights to actually call it Bubble Bobble, and they were told it was uh, going to be $250,000 for a Falcon oh game, my. which would probably sell to all three people who own a Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, and only that's one a, of them a is very a small... Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. The other two are collecting dust as a showpiece, yep. yeah. It's a it's small, small community. Um, wow, yeah, and I don't know if they do that because maybe they'll get it or they're just like, yeah, they'll never bite. And if they bite, great for us. Yep. That's probably, it's a they'll never bite kind of number. Yeah, Yeah, but Jeff Minter, uh, he's, been, he's been great. Uh, the guys at Nova Gen have been great. Uh, the CinemaWare yep. guys, again, fantastic to work with. Um, yep. Got uh, the Oliver Twins and the Bitmap Brothers. They've, they've all been, yes. they've all been great great people to work with it's been an absolute privilege yeah and those are people that have like names that are like you know the people behind the games yeah. they're more like individuals rather than this big, big company umbrella yeah. yeah big company under a big umbrella that you'll never get past the the front door <laughs> to yeah that's really great that there are people who have maintained control of their own games and are able to give permission to uh hobbyists let's say or people who want to make short runs of games yep. and and just have people enjoy it on their play, favorite platform that it's never been on. And I think they must get a lot of joy out of it too. It's like, oh my God, my game is now on Jaguar. Yep. I would never have thought that. There is yeah. a responsibility when you're handling these IPs though, to do them justice. It's like, yeah. you've got to make sure that they're at least as good as they were, if not better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, th there is a pressure, I, I'm quite sure, uh, from your end, because you want to continue making them, and these go all go on the resume uh, of your back catalog, and you know they're going to check out a couple of your titles and go, oh, but they won't be doing that because they're all great conversions. It's, it's a lot easier Imports. to approach someone, and, go, and when they say, well, what have you done? You can go, well, go look at these. Then, like, the very <laughs> first one was, the very first one was Xenon 2, and that was quite difficult to yeah. get permission to do um yeah but yeah after that it's just it's got a bit easier but yeah it's 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 still a lot of work chasing down these licenses and and there are like you know there's licensing rights and all kinds of background you know contracts that have to be signed and ndas and all sorts of stuff so we get people saying yeah. where's the digital downloads well it's like well you know our license only allows us to do x amount of physical copies you can't have a digital download <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's you can't just do whatever you want when it's somebody else's ip you have to go with their rules yep. and you know and you just have to be thankful for what you are able to do with their yep. with their ip yeah um so we're playing jumping at shadows moth line and this kind of uh ties into your patreon a little bit oh uh, yeah um because you uh have started up patreon kind of recently 
um, started offering things uh, exclusively. Yeah, such as that you're holding in your hand, uh, jumping at Shadow's Moth line. Um, so what is the motivation behind starting a Patreon page for Reboot? <laughs> um, last November, I unceremoniously got called into a meeting with about 30 other people. And um, none yeah. of us were employed when we came out of that meeting. So, <laughs> oh, no. oh, yeah, that's good incentive. Um, I, I can see that. I basically yeah. ran the numbers and realized that Reboot was not going to put food on the table. So I started up a Patreon, right. um, and yeah. it's it's building slowly. And I do appreciate everybody who signed up for that, and everybody who supported things by buying the the cartridges. That's been great. But that was the main motivation. But now it's picking up a bit, and it's it's more about I'm trying to do as much as I can for the community, and also bring in a little bit of cash at the same time. So I can't say it's all completely right. non-commercial and selfless because it isn't. But at the same time, I'm trying not to, you know, gouge people out of hard-earned money. So that's why there's that's a lot right. of competitions. So finding... I do giveaways. I've got the ROM downloads and things. So I'm trying to make it value. Yeah. yeah, finding the balance between, you know, giving people value for their money and and not having anybody get it, buy anything from the, from the Patreon, it's it's a fine balance. And time is money. And when you you know lose your job, it's like, well, now I have to make money somehow, and this is this is a way to do it. But also continue to give to the community and make things for the community. Yeah. Um. So, a little plug for your Patreon. It is at uh, patreon.com forward slash reboot games. And what can people get um, if they do sign up for your Patreon? So they get access, early access to binaries. Um, so there's some demos of some upcoming games there. Um, when I do like the mini releases for the caravan games and things, I'll, I'll drop them for uh, the top tier of the Patreon. You get it for free. Um, I've also got where Patreons can order um, physical copies of games. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> and they're they're beautiful. They're they're they have the little light inside them. Yep. They're transparent. Yeah, they're, they they're gorgeous, gorgeous um, cartridges. Every two months, I do a draw out of people who are signed up on the top tier, um, and randomly yep. select one person, and then they get to pick which. Uh, led cart they'd like and we ship one of those off nice um we run nice. competitions we've got um we've got our own discord there's uh jag studio support in there as well um yep. yeah it's a little bit of everything and the odd free game um a couple of months back i put up a poll saying which game would you like me to make and i put a list of three games and people picked like a river raid plume which is where we got raiding rivers from um, and I plan on yeah, doing that again fun game. next year, so I'm going to keep doing that until somebody picks E.T. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You can, you can, you can, uh, you can put two other terrible, terrible games that nobody ever wants, and then E.T. Yep. And then everyone will vote for exactly what you want. Exactly. That's how to rig the rig the voting. Got to find two games worse than E.T. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Whew. Would you like E.T. No. No, e. the pits from E.T. Or more pits from <laughs> ET. <laughs> Deeper pits from ET. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've been updating and extending a number of your games recently, such as uh, caravan versions of uh, Biopede and Koyashi Maru and Last Strike DX, which are also available on the Patreon. Yep. Uh, you don't seem to mind going back and revisiting games you've previously released. Are these a case of things you've always wanted to add to the games or a factor of the saying art is never finished, just abandoned? Or just like, here's a new updated version. Uh, people love these games and I just want to give more of this same game to people. Honestly, it's been a bit of both. Um, for yeah. Kobayashi Maru, um, you've got the Kobayashi Maru Redux on the rebooted cart. Basically, Ender said, I would like to redraw all of that, if you don't mind. And... Yeah. And he did, and the same for <laughs> um, Rocketeer. Um, and we yeah. added a bunch more levels to Rocketeer. There's so much more in that reboot than the original game. But we've been trying to add more gameplay or more levels, not just give them a, a fresh coat of paint. Um, or try and yeah. fix up some... I mean, that's even but, enough. <laughs> but 
Last Strike, there is one, it's not a bug, it's a thing yeah. that I put in the game, <laughs> and then I was so annoyed I forgot to take it out for the release. So, <laughs> there oh, are no. cheat codes in the original Last Strike, but I can't okay. tell anybody what they are, because they don't disable the QR. <laughs> Oh, okay. So you could use the cheat codes to get a massive score and then upload the QR oh. code. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, that's... Yeah. So last strike, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Last strike DX, when you activate any of the cheat codes, the QR screen is disabled, so... <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so actually, let's load up Last Strike DX right now. Mm -hmm. That's the next one on the list. Um, Feels like just last week you were playing it. It's it feel it really does feel like that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's 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 absolutely amazing. Um so you've also been re recently releasing short run versions of your games. Uh is it not on there? I don't think so. Am I missing something? Uh, nope. Oh, go back. Maybe it's in that that one. Top one. Top one. There you go. Excellent. That's why I left it there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um with colorful light-up carts, can you talk a little bit about uh, these games, such as Mothline and Raiding Rivers and the, the smaller packaging? Um, so, yeah, I had a bunch of um, loose Jaguar carts just on the shelf, and they're curved and they don't stack at all well, and they're horrible to store. <laughs> so yeah. I ordered a bunch of box protectors to put them in just to make them rectangular and flat. And oh. I was just I was just holding one in a hand and I thought, that's a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is. It's perfect. And they stack and and yeah. uh, and uh, super cute size. So, uh, yeah, that's where that <laughs> idea came from. And the thing is, two of these stacked on top of each other is exactly the same height as an original Jaguar box. Oh wow. So... Okay, so that's handy too. <laughs> <laughs> it was just I don't know, it was one of those just, you know, brain flash moments where you just like, you, like, why has nobody done this before? And <laughs> yeah, you get yeah. rid of the outer box, you get rid of the tray, you get, yeah. like, everybody's going, I would like a cart only. Well, there's a cart only, but here's one that's flat and will stand on your shelf. <laughs> yeah. And, and you can, if the game is either has instructions in the game, you don't need to put an instruction card in yep. it. Um, yeah, it's it's such a great idea. So that that's where that came from. And then it was like, well, I've got games. I can sell some games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, so yeah, I yeah. just started doing them for the patrons because I know people like collecting things. And it's like, well, you know, I wanted to go to a, an audience that was already focused and people I could trust because as soon as you start right. opening things up to like you know ebay and things you get people going i never received my package and it it there's the volume isn't there to cover the losses so yeah <laughs> yeah it's and it's not worth the overhead of paying ebay and etc etc you, you take quite a cut from that yeah so pretty much like yeah and the response has been really really good so we're on our fifth one at the moment which i have opened up to the public so that is um i did tenebra you played that on your show um, and yes. Aplo allowed me to a... do a limited run of 50 units. Um, oh, that's so awesome. A, that's going to be a light-up LED cart. That's the Tenebra box. Hang on. Let's see if we can get it. It'll blank and the we've picture been... out if I we... do this. But... Very nice. Yeah, such an amazing puzzle game. Have we been pronouncing it wrong? Tenebra? 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 tenebra. <laughs> been... I don't know. Tenebra? Tenebra. tenebra? tenebra? Maybe it's Tenebra. Sounds better. I, I think you're correct. I, I remember it's hard when an you... old Quake mod called Tenebra, and everybody on videos was oh. saying Tenebra. So it, I think it's like an old... I think the word means out of the darkness or something. Ah, uh, well, that makes a lot of sense, actually. So, yeah. yeah. Well, we often mispronounce things because we don't hear them. <laughs> We're the first people to say them sometimes. Uh, um, if, and it's like, uh. If anybody <laughs> wants one of these, there's still not many left, is all I will say. <laughs> <laughs> not many. It's, it's a great overwhelming. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y you'll have hours and hours and hours of fun with those two, with the number of puzzles that... Uh, 
are included in those two games. And so for, it's well, well and worth it. And for everyone that sells, I'm making a donation to um, Haplo as well so that he gets oh, something nice. for it. It's not just, you know, making the game and selling them. So it's not my game. Yeah. He deserves oh. something for it. He's going to get something for it. So Definitely. Yeah, he put in a lot of great work into it. Yep. Um, so at the top of the show, I mentioned how prolific you are with Jaguar releases, um, with many titles a year coming out. Um, so how much time a day, week, month do you estimate you put into game development? Uh, more now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I, I imagine, yeah. Um, it was a couple of hours, maybe an hour or two a night before when I was working. Um, yeah. Uh, but now it's pretty much it's full time. There are days when I don't do anything, and there are days when I will work like fourteen hours straight on them. So, right, that makes sense. It's a sort of I don't want to do this, and then I start doing it, and then it's three <laughs> o'clock in the morning, and I'm not finishing until it works. Damn it! <laughs> uh, that that is a rule I go by as well with programming. Never leave it crashing. And it doesn't matter. Always it doesn't matter how many comments yeah. you put in the code. None of it makes sense the next day. <laughs> <laughs> well, the comments were done at three in the morning, so that makes sense. <laughs> that makes um, sense. And you as well, I would love to uh, if you could organize another hundred or two people to sign up for the Patreon. That would be the dream. <laughs> what did he say? Oh, primarily job indefinitely. Well, that's the dream, isn't it? That'd be amazing. Yep, that would be good. Well, let's. Let's try and make that happen. I will definitely keep promoting all your games <laughs> on the show that. and and your, and your Patreon. So um, and your games are well worth the price of admission. Always so. But um, um, I'll give you another little anecdote. So Biopede, um, I completely yeah. rewrote that. I did write that like ten years ago. So um, I've been quite open about this in the past, and I've donated to charity about it several times. I have had a kidney transplant. So uh, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Prior to that, I used to actually go into the hospital and do dialysis three nights a week. Um, Oof. So I Oof. would go to work yeah. and then go to the hospital and plug into the dialysis machine and then come home and pass out and then go back to work the next day. So um, the original version rough, of Biofeed yeah. I did write over a couple of weeks in the hospital while I was plugged into the dialysis machine. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a good use of time. Yeah, you're just sitting there, just, right? But, I mean, it's tough. It, 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 it is out of it. so boring. Like, it's not, yeah. it's not painful <laughs> or anything. It is just so boring. Because oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get up and move. You just have to sit there, right? And it's probably not very comfortable. You've got a needle so. in your arm, so you can't move your arm because... Uh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I well, have. The yeah, you made good use of the time. That's why I do a lot of donations to um, kidney support and dialysis support and um, diabetes support okay. things. So very worthwhile cause. Um, everybody get oh, that donor button, the donor mark on their driver's license card because burying yep. organs is a waste. And oh, it, it is. Does You're not using them anymore. Lives. <laughs> if, if if you can change more lives with what you donate after you don't need them anymore like you've got it to that those people are heroes superman yes. batman they're a joke the people who put yes please tick my <laughs> organs those are the heroes yes they're usually literally using their life to give life to others yes. yeah yeah it's amazing so that's kudos to you um so I think I've already kind of asked this after working with the Jaguar for so many years. What keeps you drawn to the console? What keeps you staying on the console? And have you been tempted, ever tempted to program for another platform? Is Or is Jaguar your one baby? And it's just like, yeah, I know Jaguar. I know what I can do with it. And I can do great games. I've been tempted to move to other consoles, but I've spoken to other people who have done and like they'll like i've got a friend of mine who like kept telling me why well, you should write games and put them on the android store and then i'd say to him well how many downloads and sales did you get and he's like well last year i got 18 downloads and three sales Oof. and i'm like okay oh, yeah. well no then <laughs> <laughs> no 
even even with the small community of, of of jaguar and atari homebrew you're gonna get way more sales than that way more downloads yeah, I, mean, than it's, that. I mean it's just it's better to be a big fish in a small pond than a, a nothing fish in a massive ocean yeah exactly and um i'd rather people i'd rather like a handful of people play the games and enjoy them than nobody play them at all and, yeah. I've, like, and, and get I, feedback I've too, do, direct feedback. All I've got to do to justify that to myself is open my Steam library and sort <laughs> by games I've never even played. <laughs> <laughs> never even, never downloaded, never booted up, nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Summer Steam sale is just throwing away money because yep. <laughs> it just goes to nothing. But it's, yeah, it's really funny. But no, I do. Um, Jaguar is, is always. Well, no, I wouldn't say always because there was that 10 years where I was really bitter about it. But after that, I got over that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got better. Um, yeah. And I used to joke that like uh, when I reached the same number of releases as Atari, I'd stop. But I think I'm past that now. So. Uh, <laughs> I, oh yeah, you definitely are. Yeah, <laughs> you've eclipsed their library, <laughs> in ports and original games. Oh yeah. Um, so I think, let's see, I think we are ready to load up Jumping at Shadows. Ooh. I think we're to that Ooh. point. Don't let me change my background. I... Excellent. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh, there it is. Ooh, that is fancy. Nobody's oh, the this box. <laughs> this is the Ooh. first time. That ever. is, that is gorgeous and so me. fitting. Sorry, say that again. William Thorup artwork. Nobody has seen this before. Oh. I'll sit. William Thorpe does amazing. I'll sit over here so people can see it. <laughs> oh, there we go. Let me make that big. Let me let me transition over. Oh, that is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. That is going to be jumping off the shelves that is <laughs> when it's released. One of two boxes. Oh, oh, there's a light, interesting. There's going to be a light box and a dark box. One for the deluxe version. Oh, a deluxe version. Do you have any details on that yet? Uh, it'll be deluxe and the version. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be way more deluxe than that version. Yes. There'll be, there'll be oh, that that's version exciting. and there'll be a deluxe version. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <clears throat> very exciting. And, the, and I mean, we'll get into the release in a bit. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, so this... Uh, we did play uh, a while back, um, but this is the final version of Jumping at Shadows, at least the full version of Jumping at Shadows. Obviously, if there's any bugs that have that are fi found in the meantime, I but myself not you to are make any bugs, so we're like you know, we should be we should be good. <laughs> oh, that's a good a good a good motto to live by. Don't don't put bugs in the game, and then you don't <laughs> have to fix it. All your program is yeah. not to put bugs in. They won't be any. <laughs> yeah, don't pay them by the bug fix because that'll definitely guarantee more bugs. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's uh, load this up. Anything you want to say before we uh, give this uh, a load? Um, crank up the audio for the intro and oh, okay. don't go past about level six because don't spoil the game for everybody. Yes. Yes, we have those notes right <laughs> yeah. print, printed out on a, uh, a sheet in front of us. Okay, so we'll be quiet for the loading. So load it up. Which is... Second one, I believe. I should have it in there. In there? Yep, there it is. Nope, that's not it. No, Go I didn't back. think so. I yeah. think it's under... We'll load that one up. Nope. Oh, uh, let me just switch away from that screen for a second. Uh -huh. yeah, go to secret. Okay. Go in. Secret. Uh, <laughs> let me make sure that is the newest one. Before, before, before we get too ahead of ourselves. Yeah. I think it's one. called final, 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 honest, final, this version's final. <laughs> Super final, final <laughs> one, <five>. underscore two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that isn't the newest one. Oh, oh okay. We'll pause momentarily. <laughs> Get the new one on there. Yeah. The, do do kitties want anything? Kitties would like a snack at this moment. Do you want do you want a no, couple I... of treats? Shall I put out a treat bell unofficially and uh William yeah, just Thorup. Talk. Oh my goodness. William Thorup. Yeah. Master yeah, of baby. Artwork. Okay, here's a bell. 
Will you, will you bring it? Probably just the gray cat. There. There's. Oh, he, he tried. He did try to bring he it? He did try. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We're transferring. Just a couple of little, little treats. Transfer hey. games. Come here. Come here. You've got to ring the bell. Ring the bell. Oh, you. Oh, <gasps> gee, he did it. Good and job. the gray cat ate it. No, no, nope, no, he no. Didn't. He didn't. <laughs> Good job, good kitty. Good kitty. He did it. We can have competitions again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, it is transferred. <gasps> he's oh, he's doing it. He didn't quite get it. Oh, good, good kitty. Good kitty. I'm a good kitty. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. It's exciting. Our baby cat okay, is now ringing each. the bell. Oh my, oh my god. It ring uh, modulation, isn't it? That's yeah. Right. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Hooray! Good win. kitties. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Tip your waiters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. My are we good? Oh yep, no, you're still good. downloading. Nope, okay, good. We're good. We're good. We're that good. was up. exciting. That was extra exciting. He can compete. <laughs> the games are back on. Yeah. Woohoo. Okay. Live SD card loading action. <laughs> That's right. It's exciting. Sid's LLM so, is now fully trained. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's watched enough of it. Okay, okay. So it's under today's date. Today's so date. So we're good. Alrighty. So, uh, who worked on this? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. So let's am I see. clicking on it? What am I doing? So the people who worked on this game, it's by Reboot, Lawrence Stavely, Cyrano J for Code, Alexander Anderlex Gra Grade, A Grad New for Level Design, Art and Art Direction. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. Eric D45, Sound Engine, Ander Lex and Szazd Art for artwork, Rold Strauss for music, and now for the cover art, it is. I've forgotten his name already. William Thorup! William, William Thorup! Thorup. <laughs> Back yeah, there you go. Everything's backwards. Okay, load her up. Loading I mean, it's not beta, but. <laughs> That's the extra rare beta version. That's right. Super beta. <laughs> extra $200 on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. So congratulations. This is an astounding, amazing piece of work uh, as a platformer. I love platformers. I love shooters. You make games that are right up my alley. Um, it's super fun. And there's so, so many levels in this game. And they will keep you going for a very, very long time. Um, I was a beta tester on this. Not a great one because it's so much, so many levels. <laughs> that uh, you know, I didn't have a ton of time to do all the levels, but I did what I could. Um, so if you could talk a little bit about uh, Jumping at Shadows, uh, how it came about, um, what brought it to this point, how long have you been developing it? Okay, so, and I wanted to do, now even before that, we wanted to do a light-based game, um, just using the cry mode in the Jaguar, because not a lot of things tended to use that um and we were looking at like a light and dark based puzzle adventure game where you'd like have to pick up like things in the like a day and night cycle things would happen in the night things would happen in the day um and we didn't really get very far with that but then we sort of thought well and thought maybe let's do a platformer so like I said, we built that test room and we jumped around in that for weeks on end. Um, and yeah. that moth, the moth character that you play in the game, wasn't even designed for this game. 
Um, I got permission to do <laughs> oh. a Jaguar port of Spies in the Night and Spies in the Night 2. <gasps> Ooh, and nice. I haven't actually started them yet, so Ander drew, drew the spy, <laughs> and that's who Moth is. He's supposed oh. to be the spy in, in that, so... <laughs> Those games might still happen. Nice. I would still like to port them. They are yeah. fantastic games, uh, both of them. They're, they really are. They're really fun, puzzly games like this, where you're figuring out, you're a spy, you're using stealth. It, they're really, really nice. Yeah, it's dark, isn't it? Yeah. So we had, <laughs> it starts out quite dark. We had we had the guy jumping around the screens, and then we just started adding things to it. And we were going to do like 10 levels and release a mini game, and then Ander found some tile sets from Stasi Art, and they yeah. look great. And it snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. Because <laughs> <laughs> once you have the mechanics, you have the characters, the levels, you can just keep making levels and you go, oh, here's a, a little tweak to a mechanic and now we can do this in this set of levels. So I've got four gravitic mines. You have to load the map into an art program and then make a text file with everything that was in it using... Um, coordinates for what it was and what it was doing and it was a full it was more of a scripting system so each level in gravitic minds is more like a script that gets processed okay. um with this there's actually uh, a full graphics level editor where you can just plop the blocks down plop the enemies in tell them where they're moving um so designing the levels was a lot easier so and they just did a bunch of levels but endlessly endlessly tweaking on them and he's done a fantastic job on this and then about 18 months ago we put the light engine in which allowed us to do like we put it in so we could get like a lightning effect um with like okay. a thunder crack and a lightning crack and then the screen does that effect um, very nice and yeah. that's in the game but then we were like well we can do like strobes and change the lighting level and <laughs> we can have rooms that go dark and then you pick up like night vision goggles and it flickers green and this ah oh. <laughs> we just went to town on all yep. the lighting effects and yeah there there were some dark dark levels that just kicked my ass <laughs> it's like okay i can see it now and then when you get to a point turns out the lights and you're like oh what was it oh my god and then you have to navigate and then you make it to the light light lit area again it's it's a challenge there's there's a lot of really creative uh challenges in this and game. the puzzles and there's not the puzzles completely out of the park in this it's there's some oh, great yeah. stuff in there and it you are when you do die you always know that you caused it it was your fault <laughs> Uh, oh, a hundred percent. I've I've absolutely never blamed the mechanics in this. It's always like, oh, what did I do that for? And, uh, oh my goodness. So initially we were using some music tracks that were just, you know, left lying around, but um, I went out and got all new tracks from Roald for it. So everything is, is themed and, and titled and yeah, it just, it just all came together. And once we had like a few, yeah. a handful of levels, we it just it, everything just felt right, and it was like we need to make this more than a mini game. It's got too much in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, and I'm so glad you did. Yeah, I, I am looking forward to continuing to play this game. Uh, and it's got bosses in it too. There's, there's that two different bosses with three different boss fights. So yeah, there's a couple of bosses in there. Uh, there's over a hundred yeah. different enemy types. So there's a there's a lot there's a there's a lot yeah <laughs> and we don't throw it so all give us a rent start either we gradually add things as as you go through which which is great it's it's a very natural way to play the game you build upon your skills as you go along you're like oh I did that there okay that's what I need to do so how many uh, give us a rundown of the number of levels per portal and how many portals so the levels there are. per portal vary between three and five there are 10 portals there are 36 levels um it's got a speed run mode so when you enter a portal from the main ah. menu it starts a clock and when you come out of the exit portal back to the main menu it'll tell you how long you've spent in that uh, particular stage so it will yep. generate a speedrun code for that. So you can play the game as a speedrunner once you've actually done it. Um, 
Nice. The levels unlock so you can get... depending on how many power orbs you pick up, which are those glowing things on the on the um, on the right side of the screen there right. at the moment. Uh, so if you don't get enough in a level, you'll have to go back and go find the ones you missed. Yeah, but it's a fair <laughs> number that, like, you know, we're not. There's no way where you have to get them all. It's it's you'd have to it's be, very fair you'd have to be going out of your way to not get enough <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty much the extra ones are the ones that are hidden yeah the ones that like you'll never have trouble meeting the core no. let's say no but it's just to stop you going straight to the top of the tower and finishing the game so <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you can't just speed run that way yep. you do have to collect Excuse some things yeah sure So you mentioned uh, you mentioned a place where you got some um, artwork um, that you used in the game, and I do see that uh, mentioned a lot in a number of your games. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about um, that repository of art? Um, so there's um, a site called Open Game Art, which people just upload art that can be used freely in in games. They just want to see their art in games, and a lot of the original art in um, Last Strike and a couple of other games comes from there. Um, yeah. The artwork that's in this is from Sadzi Art. Now, they're actually um, a professional artist who sell their artwork through uh, uh, itch.io. So we've yeah. bought a number of tile sets from there. So the main blocks that the levels are made up of, um, and has designed all mm. the levels himself, but the tile sets are from Sadzi Art. But the background tiles and everything else is, is Ander. Mm. And all the sprites is, is Ander. Um, so you showed the box art behind you. So what are the release plans for this gorgeous, amazing game with the gorgeous, amazing uh, artwork? Uh, Portland Retro. And immediately into the Atari Age store and available immediately after Portland Retro. Oh, very, very nice. Uh, and which uh, kind of leads me to... A question: Have you ever made the trek to Canada or the U.S. for gaming conventions, mm. such as PRGE? Not for gaming for conventions, games. but I have been to the U.S. several times. I've never been to Canada. It is on my list of places to go. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I'd like to get there before yeah. the ice melts on top of the mountain, so I can at least see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are less and less uh, less and less snow on the mountains that we can see here from Vancouver, so it is. Uh, it's disappearing and further to that are there retro gaming conventions in australia that you go to? um i've been to a few local ones here um and by local i mean anything within 800 kilometers <laughs> yeah. my neighbor is like 10 yeah. kilometers down the road like no that's just... <laughs> <laughs> out in the wilderness yeah well australia is a big open yeah, place i've got to go outside <laughs> get on the kangaroo hop down the street <laughs> <laughs> Fight off the koalas and the drop bears. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, do you ride on the back of the kangaroo or in the pouch of the kangaroo? Wherever they let you. <laughs> <laughs> they are strong. If they that's, don't want you where, they, where you go, you'll know soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Uh, no, there, are, there have uh, been local conventions. I do try to get to them. Um, we did have a plan to try and get an Australian Jagfest going, but then COVID completely destroyed that. Um, uh, and we're, uh, we're looking at trying to get that going again. Um, but yeah, um, coming up in October, there's PAX, PAX Australia. Um, that's over in Melbourne. Okay. That happens every year, so I'll nice. head over to that. It's not retro. There will be retro areas yeah. there. Um, I won't I won't be taking anything. I'll just be attending as a visitor, but yeah. Um, I do try to get to the local ones. I, um, I would like to get to Portland, but it's a bit of a oh. bit of a hike. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a distance. I've I've done that plane ride from Australia to Canada, and it's yeah, it just keeps going. And, and the plane ride just keeps and going. You're on and the going. map, and the plane on the map touches Australia, and you think <laughs> I'm nearly there. And then, <laughs> and then it's six hours no. to get from the edge of the map to the airport. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's absolutely br brutal. But I, I I would love to get back to Australia again. Mm -hmm. Tanya's never been. I've, I've been never been. I've been You've twice. Been twice. I don't know how. Both for work, so I really didn't get enough. 
of Australia. You didn't get to Sid see. Sydney and uh, Melbourne, I've been to. Um, absolutely gorgeous. It's too big. You can't see Australia in one trip. It's way too big. No. <laughs> it is. It's massive. It's massive, massive country. It's its own continent. It's so big. Um, <laughs> I don't think so when did you... Oh, no, I was going to say, I don't yeah, think people realise how big Australia is. Like, you pick it up and drop it on top of other countries, and it's like, wow. It's, oh. it's like, yeah, I used to get calls from, like, and they'd say, like, there's flooding in Brisbane, are you okay? And I'm like, that's as far <laughs> away from me as Moscow is from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's, it's all the projection maps that really mess with people's uh, idea of how big certain continents are oh. yeah and australia is just oh my god it's, <laughs> it's so big it's, um so this is being released through atari age when did you first start working with atari age as a distributor and uh, how did you manage to get your games out before atari age were they just whoever you could get or what uh, what forms of distribution did you do before atari age so atari age, the first one was reboot rides um, yeah. And honestly, I can't remember if I approached them or if Albert approached me. I just so long ago. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, before that, we did free downloads, and um, it was on CD, pressed CDs. Oh, actually, it was right, CDR so you can first, do that yourself. and then pressed CDs because that was the only way to get things into the Jaguar. Um, and then, and yep. then, um, SCP CD and Zero Square from from Branch Jaguar. Um, they made this board called the Jagdapus Flash Flashboard, um, and that uh, we mm. released Downfall Plus on that. And it's the same board that's used in Another World and a couple of other releases. Um, okay. But the parts for that then became obsoleted, so that became obscenely <laughs> expensive. <laughs> um, and yeah. since yeah. then, I've just been releasing through Atari Age mainly, um, and yeah. recently doing my own releases because it's now feasible. And I felt like it was time to just do things myself for a bit. So yeah, yeah. <sighs> what level are you up to now? I think this would be three. Okay, so uh, you can four. go back to the hub. Four. You'll get back to the hub and then do the first one of the next gate. Okay, so uh, go. How do we do that? Ah, oh, no, keep playing till you go through. Oh, oh okay, okay. There's five levels in the first uh, one, and then it's the first one of the second one. Okay, Portal 2, World 1. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, let's see. I was reading through various interviews of yours uh, over the years, uh, and I found one from 1999. Oh, God. <laughs> so are your favorite bands still Duran Duran who we saw a few months ago yep. and Sarah Mag and Sarah McLaughlin who is from Vancouver yep. ah, very, very nice <laughs> oh very good <laughs> <laughs> yeah we saw we saw Duran Duran at a big festival called Cruel World in Los uh, Los Angeles and uh, they were absolutely amazing just exactly as they've always been playing all amazing songs they are they know to, such a great they know how to put band. a live show on <laughs> oh oh my god yeah uh new moon on monday they knocked out of the park and and had the camera person point it at an almost full moon <laughs> during the concert and they had a big moon up on the screen oh my god yeah just absolutely amazing uh, so, uh, there's a section of the Reboot website that lists games in progress. Uh, one is Jumping at Shadows, which uh, we are showing right now. It's in progress. It's done. You can move it to completed, uh, but not released yet, I guess. Um, and the other one is Xevious, that has a great looking video, and the game was shown at PRGE 2018 as a demo. Are there still plans to continue with the game, and how close is it to being completed? So, Xevious isn't one of my games. Xevious is written by Seamus, and okay. the reason he picked Xevious is because he asked me what my favorite arcade game was, and I said Xevious, so he decided he was going to write, but he didn't even tell me he was doing it. It was just called My Secret <laughs> Project, oh. so I, I didn't wow. even see it until it was playable. Um, it is, as far as I'm aware, completely working fine and fully in NTSC, but has glitches in PAL. Um, oh, okay. And 
other than that, I can't give you any more information because it's all with <laughs> Sheamus and I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, hopefully it will eventually be finished because it, it looks really, I really, really nice. I can't tell you, it is fantastic. It is arcade perfect. You, Plays you nice. play that, you wouldn't know you weren't playing the arcade version. Oh, wow. Well, a lot of people are going to be very, very happy to play that game, that's for sure. It's it's the OG shooter, um, I'm really. happy to play it and make shooters. videos and stream it, but I can't give it out. It's not my game, and I can't tell anybody when it's going to be finished. <laughs> I don't know. So, so very, very limited, yeah. Um, speaking of games in progress, are there any other games in the pipeline? Oh, yes. Uh, beyond this that you can hint at, talk about, that you've already um, released you know, videos for or something the next, that uh, you're still working the on. The next one that will hopefully be finished will be uh, Rocketeer Rebounced. Which is the oh, nice, bouncy, yes. Rocketeer Bouncy game thing. <laughs> I Super fun. I describe that. Nope, that'll do. Rocketeer <laughs> Bouncy game thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Overhead bouncy game thing. And yeah, the, I love that type of and game. And then there's yeah. the game that I started four and a half years ago for a Christmas release that year called uh, Zombie yeah. Harvest, which I still haven't Ooh. got around to finishing. And Christmas is coming ah, nice. up again, and maybe I'll finish it for Christmas. <laughs> oh, that's a good goal. That yeah. is, Christmas comes every that'll year. That'll be like a mini <laughs> game. It's basically like um, Dodgem, the old, the old arcade Dodgem game and the 2600 game. Oh, so right. don't expect yeah, fun anything game. mind meltingly fantastic for that. It is a mini game through and through. And I picked yeah, that game uh, because, but a very fun game. because it had no potential to expand into anything bigger. <laughs> Not really. I don't know how you could expand that different mazes. I don't know. Exactly. You travel it's not gonna turn into different things. maps. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Not really. Oh, you can make an open world one oh, and just keep this stats. eight way scrolling. Stats. stats on, just add stats. That'll do it. <laughs> That's right. Points. Multiplayer, online multiplayer. There you Stats go. Stats and grind. That's how you make fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Stats and grind. Yep. Speed running. Just add it all in. Load it up. Uh, so that is the end of my questions. Uh, if anybody has any last minute questions, they've all been enjoying my questions, apparently. Um, any last minute questions for Lauren Stavely? Sierra No J? Just Type it into the chat before we let him go. Oh, I missed this camera. Oh, wow. Of course, they'll never ever come back again because they just did it once. Um, so, anything else you would like to add that we didn't cover during this interview? Um, um, I, I mean, obviously, tons and tons of games we didn't talk about, but you know, I would I want to know about you. I would just <laughs> like to thank everybody I've worked with over the years who have put me in the position that I'm in now. Um, without all of those people, GGN, SH3, uh, Matt, Sheamus, and uh, Roald, everybody else I've forgotten. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't forgotten, I just didn't list you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've never forgotten yeah, you. <laughs> it's, it's been an absolute privilege to work with them. Um, they've all helped make yeah. me a better programmer. And they've helped make the games better. It's been fantastic to work with them. And yeah, just it's not just me. It's been a group effort. And thank everybody for their support yeah. um, over the years. And as, as we said earlier, the positivity completely drowns out the negativity. And as long as that's the case, um, I'll yep. keep doing what I'm doing. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, we got to keep that signal to noise ratio very high. Lots of signal, no noise. Exactly. Ignore the noise. Yeah. Well, uh, nobody's posed any questions, so they know everything about you now, uh, which is excellent. <laughs> um, just, again, if anybody wants to order any Tenebras, hit me up. <laughs> 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 he's got them they're in limited quantity um yeah definitely tech check out uh, uh reboot's patreon page um let me just post that in the chat so people can go to that 
where you can get all the latest reboot new news and keep up with all their latest releases and special things you can't get anywhere else. That is the place to be and show that you are a reboot fan and fan of everything that they do. Uh, they, oh, ZPH Coaster. Ah, and he is a fan of us. There we go. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much, Lawrence, mm -hmm. uh, for everything you do, for keeping the Jaguar vibrant and alive more than ever, uh, making exceptional games for the system. Um, you are the reason I bought a Jaguar so that I can play the games on the show at, at a mighty expense because they are not cheap, <laughs> but they are fun. <laughs> but aftermarket controllers and uh, spinny dials and six button pads and uh, jag tap thing so I can play multiplayer with all, all the hosts. Yeah. Um, it's a never ending You did it. It's your fault. My fault. <laughs> yeah it is and the jag gd and uh i haven't bought that cd add-on thank goodness i don't need that but <laughs> well i appreciate um, that yeah it, like i said jag studio is out there now so like all the 7800 2600 anybody really who thinks they'd like to make a game on the jaguar all the tools are out there there's nothing stopping you i will help anybody who needs it um sporadic will help um yeah. jump on in have fun the tools are there that's why yeah. we did it and there's an Atari Age uh, forum for the Jaguar. You're all over that forum um, for people who want to start with Jaguar or get help in programming. Yep. And uh, how do you pronounce Jaguar? Jaguar. 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 And that's how they pronounce it with the cars, right? Yep. Jaguar. 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 Yeah, we, pr we pronounce it incorrectly. Because there's a <laughs> We'll try and get better. <laughs> that is true. Jaguar. And yes. as Australians and Canadians and British people, we like our U's yeah. in all of our words. We do not want them out of there, so we better start pronouncing them, right? That's true. Jaguar. <laughs> Color. Color. Yep. There's a U in it. Yeah. Gotta gotta keep it in there. Um, so I want to thank you for coming on the show, and it's uh, a joy to play your games w when they come out mm -hmm. on the show. And it was great to have a brief overview of the small portion of the games you have made and uh, did you have a lot of fun playing? oh them? yeah oh yeah it's wonderful <laughs> yeah yeah i could have just kept playing so <laughs> yeah. there you go yeah um so we're gonna so let you fun. go and uh yeah continue on doing the great work that you do thank mm -hmm. you and we'll keep playing the great games that yes. you make <laughs> and um and we will talk with you when you inevitably win another award <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you will and it might even be for the game we just played we'll see what we'll see what it's gonna be we'll see what the uh community the says. community says yes. about your games it's up to them yeah. good stuff yeah there's a lot more competition as, which is great and as we, i said we, at the show last year the only winner are the jaguar fans because they're just getting better games mm -hmm. every yes. year every year. they are yeah, and we want more people to develop for the Jaguar. Uh, Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we hope it keeps building and building so you uh, aren't the only pillar holding, <laughs> holding it up. There's me and that 5200 guy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're the guys holding down the force, but uh, we appreciate it immensely. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll let you go, and you can continue on with your day, and we'll continue on with our night. And... Uh, uh, you can tell us what happens tomorrow because okay. you're already in the next day. Uh, well, tomorrow <laughs> uh, there's, there's an interview on ZBH with some Jaguar guy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I better tune into that. Yeah. That's awesome. No that sounds really that. good. Yeah, I watch all of his shows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thanks, Lawrence. No problem. And uh, we'll see you in the chat. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Excellent. You can hang up there. <laughs> oh that was uh excellent a lot of fun awesome. talking to lawrence yes. and his games are always fun, oh his games are obviously. so much fun to play yeah yeah They're really really good oh, uh, yeah. a lot of polish on them so so and beautiful huge output yeah and uh, yeah yeah <laughs> Glad you had, uh, need to get one of those Jaguar things. <laughs> Jaguar, you can yeah. turn up the volume on the stream now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can turn up the volume, yeah. That's Cyrano there. Um, so uh, technically we are on vacation. 
yeah. still from the show. Yeah, for uh, a little bit longer. For a little bit longer. Do a few more things. Um, and I'm getting a lot of things done. Yeah, you I, are actually. Yeah. It's, uh, not, things, no, I'm not that surprised. But, things you know, on my to-do list. The to-do list can be quite long sometimes. Oh, so, my God, it's yeah. long. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I'm doing it. Mm. Uh, but when we do come back, um, our first official show back is on the 20th of August. You don't have to wait too long, a couple weeks. Uh, we're going to be mm. playing. We have two exclusive world premieres when we come back for the Atari 2600. Terra 7 which has not been announced anywhere. So we get a uh, first look at that. And Jungle Maze, exclusive world premiere of that. It will be playing The Wall, maybe a fourth one. Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't say Jaguar. that. Um, but there's some After Darks that uh, we can you're hop gonna, on. You're going you're gonna to squish in there somewhere. Yeah, right? yeah. Like the last strike. We yes. usually wait till very the end of it because I like to have some some scores to shoot for. Fair enough. Of course, if everyone does that, then 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 there fun. are no scores. Yeah, <laughs> until right. the very end. Yeah. Um, and there's also uh, a Lynx high score nice. competition uh, with Berserkoids, which we haven't even played on the show. Oh, so be fun. that would be fun. And Atari seventy eight hundred forty fortieth anniversary classic gaming countdown. We do need to finish that. We're quite behind. <laughs> quite behind. It's only nineteen games, uh, yeah. but our our weekends are very full for yeah. the next little bit. So, but yeah. now I can I can start because uh, I was planning for this show so now i can start planning for that mm. get the 19 games write them out figure out what's going on with them see which ones i have no clue about and make sure we don't embarrass ourselves and there's a new game paratroopers for links that we'll be playing sometime after that first show uh coming up september probably then well it's between champ games and albert Uruso, the mm. next developer spotlight uh well Albert's just a spotlight. <laughs> he hasn't uh, he hasn't developed a game for these systems in a long time. Yeah. So he's a spotlight on what everything he does. Just Albert. Yeah. Albert. Just the Albert, Albert spotlight. The not Albert the developer, spotlight. Developer spotlight. And uh, and Champ Games. We have an exclusive world premiere. Oh, of we're waiting on game. that. That's so uh, exciting. Yeah. I hope that comes sometime and, soon. Yep. So I've touched base with him. We're good yep. to go. Oh, he's, good. He's finishing it up. He'll let me know about when we're getting close, and then okay. I can schedule it. Nice. 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 Um, and I've started to put together the ZX Spectrum oh, special because yeah. I got a ZX Spectrum. There's at least one game there. There's a whole bunch that I want to add. Yeah. Um, I have some jail bars to clear up. I did oh, replace yeah. some caps. One cap and two resistors. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't work, so oh, I have to do no. some more cap replacing yep. and do some further investigation into that. Um, but I won't do that before it clears up the jail bars. But mm -hmm. everything's good. I've got my multi cart for my ZX Spectrum. Uh, very happy about that. Mm -hmm. I've got all the pieces to fix the ZX Spectrum. I just have to slowly do it and make sure I don't destroy it in the meantime. Um, and developer spotlight on Chris Walton. Um, sometime soon? Sometime soon. His boom game is on the list of games that are scheduled to be released at prg oh, so, so I before would, then i yeah. would like to get them in before then okay so we can end on boom before nice. it goes to prg nice. but that one hasn't been like officially officially announced anywhere but mm. those um coming soon atari age flyers that are being put in with the orders oh and people are getting a lot of orders so people have been posting those as well it's on that. Oh, good. But okay, on the way then. I don't know if that's an old thing he's getting rid of. Mm -hmm. Like, I have an older one. It also lists boom, but I don't know. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Um, <laughs> what else is happening? Oh, uh -huh. no mouse overs. Um, yeah, just did that. I think yep. that's... I think that's it. Yeah. Should we do a little bit more bell ringing with the cat? Oh, yes. Uh, that got that me was very excited. I think we'll bring out two bells. Okay. This won't be an official no. competition. No, but we'll, you'll you get, me you'll get a taste for so those. Yeah, thank mine. you. Oh, it hurts. It does. It, it, it pinches after a while. I don't know what it is, but... Uh... So let's get these two cats out. And we won't... Ooh. Let me... Fix this so it's straight. There we go. Angle it out a bit better. Okay. Move this over. Give oh, us he's room. making little squeaky. Oh, you're squeaky. Are you a squeaky cat? Those. Okay. So we'll Reach just do a straight 
little competition. We're not going to count them. We're just going to see how these guys do. And Yep. True. I did trigger a treat time, but didn't get public. The Twitch interface confused me. Uh, oh, oh the treat it. time is disabled right now. Yes. The the, the ball is not disabled, but we want to we want to do this we right now. Try this. So we'll dedicate this to you, Rod Castle. Yeah. <laughs> if you did trigger one. Yeah. Um, it probably didn't make the noise because well that, we you... we were in a different mode and in, during an interview we don't really do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because <laughs> it yeah. just. Well, we'll up. do this on your behalf. So you're ready? Okay. So oh, we're gonna look try at him. it. Look at him. Oh. He's... Okay. Let's do it. Who's gonna get the bells? Ring the bell. Ring it. Ring the bell. Yeah, you gotta hit the bell. One of you has to hit the bell. What's the up bell. with you guys? Hit the bell. Get it. Any bell. Yeah. Any bell. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Hit the bell. Hit the bell, Sid. <laughs> He's no. watching. Don't steal that. Hit the bell. Oh, good kitty. Oh, he got it. Yep. That's for you. Good kitty. There you go. That's for you. Excellent. This we is just extended uh, treat training. Oh, Sid, all trained. I missed treat time earlier. Yes, yeah. he did it for the first time today, officially. Yes. He did kind of accidentally do did it, it at the time. last show, but he wasn't quite sure what he was he's doing. This time he's like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, he, he's definitely a bit distracted by what Atari is doing. Yeah. So that's but that's okay. <laughs> oh, smacking Atari. Yeah, smacking Atari. That'll get you a treat. Oh, oh, try again. Try again. Try again, Sid. Hit it. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Not Hit my the finger. Bell. Bell. Here. Hit the bell, baby. Good oh, kitty. good kitty. Oh, he's on his way. <laughs> You're so excited. <laughs> he's on his way. Yeah. He's, he's making the connection today. Yeah, like he is. really reinforcing it. There. Good kitty. There you go. Now he's like, treat. If I hit this, I get a treat. Yeah. Oh my God. That was this a solid bell hit. Agreed. Very solid. He's like, if I don't hit the bell and the bell rings, I don't get a treat. Oh, he's going to sleep on this. And next time he's going to be like, ding, 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 ding. Oh, there's a oh, treat that no. Atari mi missed. That's oh, okay. No. That's okay. That's okay. He did. He did. False positive. The bell. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Good kitty. Right there. Good kitty. Good kitty. Neurons, Neurons connecting. connecting. Z -z 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 yeah. <laughs> a little development. Oh, another thing I've Got been... Got one more in my hand, guys. Another thing I've been doing while on vacation from ZPH is... Good kitty. Um, That's the last one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Good kitties. I have to clean my hands. I'll be right back. Is um, taking all of my old hi eight tapes and digital eight tapes and digitizing them and kev's all over them kev from 20 years ago is all over them because that was the era that i was like filming everything with my handheld camera from like 97 to probably mid 2000s when i went really crazy yeah a lot of parties kev a lot of film at parties <laughs> <laughs> don't worry it's a lot of embarrassing stuff for me too <laughs> they're not getting out to the public <laughs> uh, we'll see about that <laughs> yeah it's like people say uh, nowadays it's like oh if we had youtube back then oh my james god james was youtube back then yeah i was because <laughs> i was putting video out on the internet at like 320 by 200 postage stamp <laughs> in 2000 yeah maybe 99 Ooh, 2000 2001 yeah but it was like very short and very small yeah real was, player yeah, <laughs> yeah it was real player i'm pretty sure that was the first codec i used was a real player codec yeah, there you go or whatever codec they there used. you go the um the package was real player <laughs> 320 by 240 is all you need yeah. it yep. is hello hello chow stony mouth um and then i then i switched to um another codec yeah it's uh, uh keep an eye out for an extortion letter yeah i'll show i'll send a very short clip of what you did and an amount and there'll be nothing else and uh yeah it has to be paid in bitcoin by the way yeah. <laughs> um 
so thanks for tuning in. It was uh, uh, truly a blast today. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot uh, of fun. I had a lot of fun talking to Ga- Lauren. You had a lot of fun talking. I had a lot of fun playing a games. A lot of fun playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. You Always probably played good. some games you haven't played before. Uh, yeah. You played yeah. most of them. I have. I mean, I did um, give them a test r- test run a yeah. couple, like a week ago. So yeah. <laughs> I had a little bit of an idea of what I was yeah. doing. Push the button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So thanks, uh, huge thanks to Lauren Stavely, Cyrano J for coming on the show mm-hmm. and talking with us. Uh, a true pleasure, like I said before. But everybody else who tuned in for this, uh, Cyrano, Gamma, Dev, Rendered Ghost, it's Kev, Chow Stunny, Mao, uh, Dan, AVC, Rod Kastler, Vitoko. Um, who else? Got nostalgic. Nostalgic. Pseudographics. Pseudographics, yeah. W Welsh Warrior. Warrior. Welsh Warrior. Ah. Yeah, that's what it stands for. Nice. Carl G. Lots of people jumping in. Beer Pocock. Pocock. Hey, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Next month. Uh, Double Down. Found the fur. Crunchy the Clown. It's, it's hard when you're talking to, to deal with the chat, I find. But, it is. Uh, and that's why I say question in all yeah. capitals. Look, yeah. nobody had any questions. I guess I was doing yeah. a good job. Philip Meyer. Uh, and that is the That's top. Alan the fur, Mark Johannes. Oh, this guy's so and happy. Everybody. Oh, he purrs. He's so happy. Because he's so smart. He figured he's, it he's out. He's like, I've got a brain. I can hit bells. <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh, I was we worried were, for him. <laughs> you were worried. Because I was like, You're like, oh, I'm no. just, because I was comparing him to, you know, other kitties. <laughs> you shouldn't that, compare him to no, other kitties. No, every kitties is own. different. He's his own cat. And he also, takes... I think Sprite learned it when he was older. We didn't yeah. have him hitting bells right away, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sprite just saw Atari do it and went, oh, ding. <laughs> just. I see. Yeah. <laughs> I see how this works. Yeah. No, he's got it. He's got it, <laughs> I Rock, think. Rock Kessler says, we were all worried. We have a gambling, a gambling business here, you know. That's right. <laughs> so the first show back, we're going to have his debut yes. of his actual competition. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll have to adjust anything. I think you should was, keep it the same. Yep. Um, because it's first to ten. It is. And the lead, right? So and it's, you and can it's based you can on what they it. want to you bet can, on. Yeah, yeah. Because Atari's going to win, but by how much? Well, is he you don't win? know that. That's true. He's got a couple weeks to hone his skills. He's yep. a little kitten. He'll He's be got thinking on it. Very fast reflexes. This he cat. Does. So yep. you never know. His brain is very malleable. <laughs> <laughs> mm, cat brain. Oh, oh he's so geez. sweet. Um, so yeah, we'll bring yeah. that back, and uh, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So, uh, but we'll be doing after darks in between. Yes, here and there. Yeah. So watch out for those. Mm-hmm. Make sure you follow this stream because it'll be coming on at bizarre times on bizarre days. Totally random. <laughs> uh, so that's it for us. Uh, we're gonna go relax and. Uh, Watch some more of The Boys. The Boys, we started watching. Just started. First yeah. episode. I'm like, this is the superhero movie sh- TV show I've always wanted. <laughs> Where it's not like, everybody's awesome. There's good guys and bad guys and that's it. Yeah. It's like, mm, it's yeah. a little bit you, muddy. You like, the pr- you like the premise of it. Yeah. 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 And I like that because the only other one I've seen was that Will Smith superhero film which I can't remember the name of it right now, um, where he's a... Hancock? Yeah, Hancock, where he's a very flawed character. Yeah. And he has to go to jail. <laughs> yeah. Because he was like... Well, and he willingly goes. City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caused so much damage. Like, oh, that's how superhero movies should be. There, There's yeah. collateral damage. Yeah. The show gets bonkers. Yeah. Great. Excellent. They're all bastards. It, they yeah. kind of set that up right in the first episode. So it's like... Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Flawed doesn't begin to describe the voice. Well, uh, we've only seen one episode, so I'm sure it gets worse. But the concept of it, I think, is fantastic. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think just from just from the one episode, the idea of power corrupts is is it at the end of the day. And there's like, like a they have power of, and it corrupts them. A team of but, superheroes for each city. It's like oh, they franchised it. The, yeah. It's like, oh, it's this is crazy. exactly how it would go. go yeah. <laughs> Kind of is, isn't it? Because, like, how oh. would the superheroes make money otherwise? People would just donate to them, I guess? Or they'd steal it on the side? Because, yeah. like, uh-huh. no, they'd have to be paid to how to do stuff, I guess. It's so crazy. Scary part, producers, is how many people don't get that Homelander is a villain, no matter how explicit, explicit they, they make, make it. it. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Well, you can tell. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell. Superman didn't pulling. need any money. Well, he had a job. He worked at a newspaper. Well, and and he he was and, motivated to do good in the world because he was an alien from and another same with another. Both worked at newspapers, taking That's true. getting getting the scoop, getting the inside scoop because they could yes. be there at the crime scene immediately. Yeah. But I mean, this con the concept that everyone who becomes who gets who has superhero powers has good intent is yes it, not going to be correct, right? So and they haven't. I mean, they didn't address that in the first episode because they can only do so. It's much. only one episode. And I was like. Where are the all the people that have superpowers that don't join up? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway. We'll find out more. Yeah. Don't We're tell catching us. up on a bunch don't of shows us. we never really watched, so uh, yeah. we found a couple of good ones. Because so we cool. finished uh, Mandalorian. Mandalorian, yeah. That was great. I liked yeah. it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman wasted the money. <laughs> <for> the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was born rich. He didn't need any money. No. He just no. put it all into planes and cars. and mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we're out of here. Yes. Uh, we're going to go uh, pet this cat. Yes. And pamper him because he's so cute. Yes. And he's a good kitty. He's a good kitty. You're yeah. such a good kitty. He's such a good kitty. Yeah. He seemed to like the pink bell, someone pointed out. Yeah, so but it might I be think, his bell. I think he looks to see where, what Atari's doing. He and he's always mimicking Atari. Atari. So we'll see if he... If if we put two separate bells, if he'll use one or he'll go to Atari's bell, but I don't think that matters. It never did. No. Either cat can ring either bell and it yeah. counts. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. All right. So uh, have a good night, and uh, we will see you soon, and if not, on the 20th of August. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you then. Yeah. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night.